Okay, friends. Well, welcome back. Uh, it's been a little bit of a hiatus. I guess we'll call it our holiday break. Why not? Uh, but uh, let's start off with a little recap of where we left off, um, because there's a good chance today might be our campaign ender. You never know. It depends on how we do. Uh, but uh, in our last couple of episodes here, we uh, essentially were not successful in stopping this ritual to, st to Talos, although we did kind of kill all the cultists that brought it up. We just didn't do it fast enough. Um, to put a stop to what they were trying to do. Um, and because the ritual was successful, uh, they uh, you did notice like this huge storm cloud seemed to be kind of looming uh, over this area of the storm coast um, kind of ever presently um, with weird weather patterns, sporadic winds, lightning, thunder strikes, etc. Uh, that were really just devastating this area of the coast. And so you guys headed back to Leylon uh, to try to discover people that can maybe figure out what it is. Uh, after some of that discovery uh, and kind of trying to figure out a little bit more, uh, you did discover that it seems like the cultists had congregated in a certain area called the Thunder Cliffs, which is uh, up the up the Sword Coast a little bit, uh, a few days. Uh, you chartered a couple of ships to take you out that way, led by a, a, a captain uh, who unfortunately ended up being uh, a cultist of Talos himself, uh, who was basically just trying to lead you to your death. Um, thankfully, uh, his 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 crew mutinied because they were not cultists. Uh, and so with the help of his um, crew, you guys were able to kill the captain, uh, get him off of the ship, send him to his doom, uh, and then basically commandeer the ship uh, towards the Thunder Cliffs. Uh, as you get closer to the Thunder Cliffs, though, the, the weather patterns got even more devastating. Uh, more devious machinations started to attack you. Uh, including these like crazy ghost ships and then there were manticores and a giant crab all kinds of huge terrible monsters basically trying to thwart your path into this cultist lair uh, in this portion uh, thankfully though you were able to kind of best all of them uh, and you uh, were able to thankfully get to the shore without too much trouble even though Sless had caught the ship you were on on fire uh, as is you know normal of a fiery uh, pyromancer uh, in general uh, but because of the magical boat you acquired from Leylon uh, you did have a means of getting to the shore without too much trouble um, and that's kind of where we left off after you had just killed this giant crab that was protecting uh, this cultist layer you are now on the beach in the thunder cliffs uh, which I do have the map uh, up if you guys want to get a look at it you can see it from there uh, slice I am seeing your rolls by the way um, so it looks like it's working there we go um, and uh so where we are now, as you kind of approach, uh, you're, you're um, on the bottom of this cliff face where this uh, very thin strip of shoreline is. Uh, and you can tell that, you know, if the tide moves in, the caves could fill up uh, as well. It's a little concerning. Uh, thankfully, right now it's low tide, uh, but the cliffs are rather jagged. There are a few openings that seem to kind of go into this cave system. Um, one is further in front of you. Um, you can see kind of the wrecked portion of a, um, of a ship far off in the distance um and then in front of you is another entrance into this cave system as well um what i would like everyone to do though as you're kind of dealing with the buffeting winds and the storms above you uh, and still a little bit of weakened from this fight you just completed with this uh giant crab uh can i have everyone roll a perception check for me yeah i try them at seven health right now <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love the pop-ups, man. Hey. On the character sheet. That's time. Um, so then, uh, Zendri, what'd you get on your perception? And Flux as well, what'd you get? Uh, mine was five, and it looks like Zendri got eight. Eight, okay. Sorry, uh, I thought I was not muted. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Um, so, uh, Seducius... It's hard to make out. You can't quite get a sense of it, but you do notice that the sands, like as the water kind of washes over them and pulls away, there's a weird ripple pattern in the sand. You can't tell what it is, but you, you can tell like there, there's something um, not quite right um, about the pattern you're seeing in the sand in front of you. Is it like there's something under the sand? It seems to be. It's almost like um, these like repeating S patterns. Seducius. Indeed. Uh, 
Can I just like stick my hand in the sand and see if I feel anything? Sure. Okay. What you, I want to do. you stick your hand in the sand, um, and as you kind of go through, just a little bit below the surface, not very much, an, an inch maybe at most. You you do kind of pull up, and you recognize as you pull up, like, oh, there's a wire in here, and as you pull up more, more and more wire comes out. Uh, can I have you roll an Arcana check? You're not 100% sure what, um, but being a bard and knowing magic, you can tell that somehow this wire was enchanted. But you don't know what it did. Can I pull on it to see like how long or like kind of where sure. the source is or where it goes? Yeah, totally. Yeah, so you just keep pulling on it, keep pulling on it. More and more of this wire comes out. As you pull on it more, you kind of see that it um, kind of snakes its way through much of the shore. Like there's no real end to this wire. There's just a lot of it. Um... Can I have you roll a survival check? Uh, and actually, Torin, given your background, I'm going to have you roll a survival check too as you notice this. Ooh. Um, so, Seduces, you just keep pulling on it. And as you pull on it, Torin goes over to you and like, pushes you and it's like trying to make you stop. Um, Torin, you recognize that uh, this is this is some type of like alarm. Like this was basically meant like if someone touched it or or messed with it, 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 it was magically uh, enchanted with an alarm spell. So someone Great. somewhere <laughs> likely knows that you have approached this beach. Well, we're dead. Wait. Sorry, guys. Wait, there you go. <laughs> oh, man, this campaign ender is setting up. This is going to be a whole different kind of ending. Great. Uh, awesome. Yeah, just pull on a random string. <laughs> I haven't TPK'd right. a party yet, so we'll find out if that happens tonight. Uh, but yeah, you, Torin, you a hundred percent know that whoever else is inside of this, um, area, uh, uh, is aware of you. Um, that being said, uh, basically all of you start to hear off in the distance now, um, coming from behind that ship, you know, it's almost a hundred yards in front of, or a hundred feet in front of you. It's a, it's a good ways away. Um, you hear grumbling like, like people are talking and then suddenly it goes quiet. Uh, it sounds good. I just, I just wanted more string for my loot, you guys. I'm sorry. You <laughs> screwed us again. Classic <laughs> us, dude. Hey, wh while we're here, before we get into battle, can somebody do some healing spells? <laughs> we have time yes. for that. Can we take a short rest. Uh, yeah. or are, we, are we? Let's take a look here. I have my lay on hands pool. Who's really in need? I got forty. Yeah, it's, I'm at it's, 7 out of 50. I don't know what everybody else is at. Uh, Torin, it's kind of up to you what you want to do if you want to try and take a short rest. Um, you definitely just got the the, the sense that y'all have alarmed people. Um, so, you know, if you're going to take a short rest here, it's, it's kind of up to you how you want to do that. Find a safe place, try to do it here, keep a lookout, you know, et cetera. But uh, you definitely know that you have set off, set off some warning bells. Well, maybe if we keep pulling that rope, it'll bring a tent over or something. <laughs> no, no, no. No, 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 no. 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 Uh, I don't know what lay in hands does, so maybe we should do that, I guess. Yeah, can I think you guys can some HP, dog. Say that again, Zendry. I said, can I cast aid? Sure. Yeah. Who? So what are y'all at? Who's, like, the lowest? Probably Sless. I have 28. Sless. He's, he's, he's on two 20. hands. Sless <laughs> is, is at yeah. seven. Yeah. Uh, Lucius, where are you at? Tell me. I'm at 22 out of 59. What about you, Flux? I'm 47 out of 60, so I'm, I'm okay for now. I say that now. All right. But so I'm going to cast... <laughs> I can cast eight on three. Wait. Yeah, right now, Sless is like, let's get on this boat and go back. <laughs> yeah, three creatures. So I'll choose Not Seduceus, Sless, and Torin. Okay. Cast and then Sless, I can give you up to forty of my uh, forty hit points, but I don't want to deplete it because I'm sure we're probably going to need this later. So can I give you like twenty? That sounds good to me. You okay with that? 
Yeah, it puts me at 35 after Zendry's 8. Zendry gave us 8, you said? 5. Yeah. Oh, 5. Oh, all right, let me take away 3. I also I also have aid, too, so if anyone needs this in battle or whatever, I can always cast it as well um, and give other people stuff. So. so let's okay. just do a quick HP check so I can update uh, everything as well. What's, um, what's uh, Flux, what's your total HP at right now? Uh, 47 out of 60. Uh, so that's minus, what, 23, 13. And then Seducius, what are you at? Uh, now I'm at 27. Ooh, not so great for you either, huh? Mm-mm. And then Sless, you're now at what? 32. 33. 29. Hold on one second for me, guys. Uh Torin, you said you were at 33? Yep. And then Zendry, you said 29? Mm-hmm. Man, I've beaten you guys up last sesh, huh? Uh, <laughs> You're yeah. really just trying to kill us, and we're just going to start over in a new game. Game. <laughs> Certainly an option. New characters and everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Um, so you guys have taken some time to heal each other. Anything else you'd like to do in this next couple of moments? Can I use any of those healing spells on myself? Yeah, of course. I forget which one I can do that on. Pretty much all of you are the ones that you have you can do on yourself. Um, we'll just do your wounds on myself. Okay. Level one or level two? Uh, one. Okay. You give me seven. Cool. All right. Seven more points of health. So you're 46 now? I do math, but I don't think that's right. Oh, were you at 29, not 39? Sorry, you should be at 36. Yeah. Why is this not working? Uh, Celeste, were you going to ask a question? Yeah, I, so remind me again, so, so Font of Magic, which allows me to like regain a spell slot. Mm-hmm. So it says I have eight sorcery points. So what's what's the math again for... Because I remember last mm-hmm. time I tried to do this, I did it wrong. Let me look and just double check. Um, I'm pretty sure... Wh- wh- what particular spell slot are you trying to get back? Or which one? I don't, have any, I don't have any fourth level, so I'd like to get one or two of those back. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty certain if you do all of your sorcery points, you can get one back, but let me make sure. Uh, let's find out. Uh, to get a fourth level cell slot back, you need to sacrifice six sorcery points. So if you give six, you can get one fourth level point. Uh, okay, I'll do that. if you want to burn all of them to get some back, you can do six to get a fourth level and then the last two to get one more first level. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Cool. All righty. Um, so as you guys are kind of there, you know, dusting off your wounds, Seducius is like holding on to this wire still. Um, you know, you're still, you, you pretty much just ran here from this crab that like, you know, charged at you. Um, so you're still shaking off all of the sand and dirt and, and uh, battle scars you had from this previous fight that just ended. And as Seduce is trying to figure out what this wire is and Torrin's trying to tell him to stop, you see um, a couple of figures approach you. Um, they seem to be um, sailors of some type. They've got like short kind of cropped uh, baggy capris. Um, a sash kind of covering their waist and some one has it over the shoulder. Uh, you know, one of them kind of looks at you and goes, Oi! What you doing here? There's not a place for the likes of you, huh? <laughs> Great. Who's taking the lead tonight? <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, sorry, I was just uh, pulling, pulling on this string. I didn't know what it was for. Uh, sorry if I disturbed you. Indeed. Well, that's a right dumb decision, isn't it? 
Uh, seems like it uh, in hindsight. Indeed. Uh, where's the uh, where's the ship you came in on, huh? Oh, uh, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, it is. That's why I asked it. <laughs> what, the hell happened, what the hell happened to our ship? I forget. Did it burn down? Yeah, we, we burned one, it. One of fire. It caught yeah. fire because of uh, Celeste. Yeah, then we yeah. jumped into a canoe or something bullcrowded. Yeah, our <laughs> ship burned down. Um, and we crashed on Nun's Island and fought a giant mm. crab. And here we are, pulling on the string like a bunch of idiots. Yeah, it seems like a... Dumb, dumb choices on your part. Uh, in either case, um, I guess this is the part where we mug you, because that's um, pretty much what we do here. And he kind of looks at his friend and kind of elbows him. His friend takes out his sword and just kind of walks like nonchalantly at you, like he just wasn't expecting this to be so easy. And his little friend says, uh, "Well, you heard him. Um, I guess give us your money, or we'll kill you." <laughs> Uh, how many of them? There's only two of them? There's only two of them right now. Uh, okay, well, th that's not going to happen. I'm going to choke them out. I'm going to grab them. Everyone roll for initiative. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> that was the worst. Since you got a one, yikes. Ooh. Two, oh. so. I just, wait. Listen, I roll the lowest initiative, so you guys all get a chance to battle before I just kill them all. That's what happens. <laughs> five. We all roll like crap. I got 19 dogs, so I uh, guess it's all me, baby. Like, you're the only double digit, I think. <laughs> Here we go. All right, let's see. Uh, I'm just going to go down the list because I don't see them all. There we go. Uh, Celeste got a one. Nice start. Okay, good. Uh, Sadducius got yeah, a seven. Go <laughs> uh, Torin got a five. Let's see if I can see the other ones. Game log. Uh, Flux got a 19. Nice job. And Zendri got a two. <laughs> Trying to fight me for last place there, Zendri? <laughs> <It's ending. laughs> Let's go to Vegas, dude. <laughs> All right, so as Torin uh, tries to grab one of them, um, you kind of see him jump back and he goes, oh, these blaming idiots just think they do everything here, don't they? All right, boys, let's get out of here. And you just see like three or four other ones kind of pop up from around the other boat that was back there. And he goes, don't worry about the salvage on this one right now. We've got a little bit of a um, more urgent problem we need to face. Uh, and so you see a bunch of the other ones kind of come from the other side too. Uh, first one goes up. This one is the one who I was trying to get choked out by Torin. Uh, so he's just going to go for Torn first. Uh, and he's going to try to hit you. Uh, ba -ba 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 uh, so Torin. He's going to make a couple of hits with his little scimitar that he's got. First one will hit you, I think. What's your armor class, Torn? Oh, shoot. Um. 16. Uh, actually, he misses. Uh, first one misses. Second one misses as well. So kind of jumps back on both of you. You're able to kind of like kind of turn a little bit and get into the next one. Uh, he looks at you a little bit more concerned than he first started this. Um, <laughs> one of the ones from the back, though, will just move up a little bit, um, kind of get to the shoreline, uh, and he will just fire off at Sless with his crossbow. That one, he rolled a two, so that one misses. Uh, that brings us to this other one. This guy's got to move in on... Torrent as well. First one misses. Second one. I can't roll shit today. What happened to those natty 20s you said I was going to get, Celeste? Uh, and that'll bring us to Flux. Alright, well I want to at least first just cast Bless on some of my not so bless. strong people right now. Yeah, yeah, okay. um, That's a bless so, <laughs> let me, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you a bless light. Um, so who are you blessing? Um, I'm going to bless Who's really, really 
not in a good shape right now. I feel like it's going to be Torin and Celeste and Seduceus. Uh, I think Seduceus now, because he didn't get any healing, is at the lowest. Okay. So <laughs> let, me get, <laughs> let me give Seduceus a little bit of blessing. I'm going to bless your life. Um, who else needs it really bad? Um, I can only do three. Probably Celeste, dude. Pretty He's going to set himself on fire or something. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah. then I guess Celeste and Zendi, how you doing? I have 36. Okay, then Torin? Yeah, 33, so yeah. Okay, so then just by, you know, math, I do, I give Torin. So I'm going to just throw Bless on those guys. So Seducius, um, Torin, and Celeste? That's five? Uh, yes. Yeah, what does it do? Yes. Uh, so what it does is I am... Um, Blessing all of you guys so that whenever a target makes an attack roll or a saving throw before the spell ends, the target can roll a d4 and add the number rolled to the attack or saving throw. So, like, you basically, like, it helps you not right. die. So I don't get <laughs> so extra much. health right now, though? No, you don't get anything yeah. extra. You just basically are get a little bit more of a blessing. Nice. Okay. Uh, how long does that last, by the way? Uh... Up to one minute. minute. Mm-hmm. Alright. So be quick. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Plexo, anything else on your turn? Um hold on. I, since I did the since I cast Bless, is there any way that I can attack still or no? I can't, right? Yeah, Bless would have been your action, okay. so you can take bonus actions at this point or move. <laughs> no, I'll just I'm um, gonna just stay. No. Uh, that'll bring us to one of the other spies. Um, this guy's pretty far out of range. He's just gonna try and get close. I think he's got a shot on Celeste though, which he's gonna try. That will hit. Um, so Celeste, you're gonna take. Uh, five points of damage as a crossbow bullet sinks into your shoulder. Uh, okay. Well, I'm going to do Hellish Rebuke. Sure. Uh, what's the range on Hellish Rebuke? 60. Oh, who's, was that, that was S5? Is that what S5, you said? S5, yep. Oh, uh, 60 feet. I think he's too far away, huh? Let's check. No, he's in range. Oh, okay. Yeah, there we go. All right. Uh, DC? Uh, 14. He fails. Oh, look at that. 18 points of damage. Nice. Yeah. Uh, this guy screams uh, in agony. He's not dead, but as you can kind of okay. see, this fire should kind of come out of his body. He He's like <clears throat> little pieces of like smoke are coming off of him and steam from the water that kind of evaporated off of his body in a flash. Uh, that'll end his turn uh, and bring us to the other spy uh, who will do more of the same, but he is not going to be able to do much. So he'll just use his turn to get as close as he can. Oh, how much damage did you say I took? Uh, six. Okay. Five? Six. Excuse me. Um, five points of damage. Okay. Uh, that'll bring us to S3. He'll just move up a little bit. And he will also use his crossbow. Um, they're just going to keep going in on Celeste because you're the one on that outside. Uh, this one misses, though. Uh, Seducius, it brings us to you. All righty. Uh, I'm going to... I just moved my little guy on there, and then I'm going to cast um, Shatter. Okay. Where are you uh, casting it? Yeah, I'm deciding actually real quick. So my 10-foot sphere, if I kind of cast it like forward towards like s4 will that end up hitting s1 and s6 uh let me check it's a 10 foot sphere you said yeah so that's about 10 feet yeah you could hit all three of them yeah okay i'm gonna do that okay uh what's the um cons form uh, 15. We'll just probably roll them all together because it's faster that way. Uh, we're going to say they all failed. I rolled a two. <laughs> cool. 
12 points of damage from all? Mm -hmm. Alrighty. They all start to kind of grab their ears in pain and agony. You see them start to ripple around. Any other effects on Shatter, or is it just the damage? Um, hold on. I switched my screen. No, that's it. Cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything else on your turn, Stucius? Um, no, not not yet, not yet. All right, Torin, that brings us to you. Right, I'm gonna do level three moonbeam. Okay. Right in between all three of those. Okay. Uh, moonbeam is there. a five foot radius, yeah. Yeah. Will that hit all three of them technically if I put it in the middle? I think. Or is that is I'll, that uh, the square ten? I'll allow it. I'll say if you put it like right in that center, the way they're bunched up, I, I think yeah, that would hit them. Okay. Um. All right. Let me. And then con what for that? Oh shoot! What is it? It is fourteen. Uh, they do succeed, so they'll just take half damage. Okay. Um, I rolled a 13. So, so six of that. damage for them all. All right. Anything else on your turn, sir? Um, yeah, I'm going to transform into a huge eagle. Awesome. All right. <laughs> As you uh, are up there now as a giant eagle. Uh, I think he actually says, Mighty Eagle, is what he says. <laughs> Mighty <laughs> Eagle! Eagle! Uh, Zendry, that brings us to your turn. <laughs> I am going to... Hmm... I'm gonna cast, or yeah, I'm gonna cast inflict wounds okay. on S six. All right. Uh, so oh. you kind of reach out to um, the sailor who started all of this, seeing that he's already kind of bleeding from the ears <laughs> uh, and badly damaged. Uh, what level are you casting this at? First level. All righty. Roll to hit for me. What'd you get? 19. 19. That definitely hits. Go ahead and roll your damage. Bam. 12. 12. Nice. Awesome. 12 points of damage to S6. All right. S6, just kind of like you, you grab him and start to cast uh, your spell through it. And as you do it, you see the flesh around your hand kind of start to blacken uh, and start to decompose because uh, Inflict Wounds is pretty gnarly. Uh, and his hand just kind of sloughs off in your hand, and the rest of his body just kind of falls backwards dead. Uh, so that one's dead. Anything else on your turn? Uh, yeah, I'd like to queue up Meow Squared. All right, Meow Squared. Uh, burp, 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 burp. Meow Meow is now in play for your spiritual weapon. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> And that'll end your turn. And that'll bring us to Sless. All right. I'm going to do uh, Burning Hands, and I'm going to aim it so that way both S1 and S4 are in my little 15-foot cone. So you're trying to get, like, here? Yeah. So that way... Um... We're like right there, right? And then kind of just go right towards S4 and S1. I don't know if there's a way to get them. Yeah, not from where you are. Uh, no, actually, yeah, you can. All right, cool. Uh, Dex okay. uh, 14 uh, or 15? 14. Uh, they fail. Go ahead and roll your damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. All right. 14, 14 damage. Both of these guys um, just melt uh, in the fire that you've cast. 
Um, as these ones start to um, just <coughs> scream to death in agony, um, the other one also kind of suffering from your hellish rebuke, seeing this fire that you cast. Um, you hear one of them go, "This isn't worth it. Um, we don't, we don't want to be here either." Um, fuck! And they start trying to run away. Uh, Slice anything else on your turn? No, that's it. All right. Uh, that'll bring us to the spy. He is, in fact, going to. Um, yeah, he's gonna like shoot and run. Uh, so first one, he misses uh, as he's anxious and trying to flee, and then uses the rest of the turn to get out of there. And that'll bring us to Flux. All right, so we still have S3 and S5, correct, Amundo? Uh S3, S5, and S2, they're just trying to get the fuck out. You heard something along the lines of, they Got don't want to be here either. This place sucks. Okay. Et cetera, et cetera. All right, well, I'm going to get a little bit closer to S3, like right about there, and I'm going to... Huh? Totes. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna use my bonus action, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, huh? oh, can I, yeah. can I throw out? Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure Oakley just came out right there. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, throw out the valve entity on S3, and then I'm gonna attack him with my longsword, just a regular old friggin' attack, because now I got advantage on this fool, and I can roll twice. Right, I can Correct. attack twice on this pool. I just want to stab him. I really just want to right, stab yeah. him. Yeah. I'm kind of mad. Roll so, you know, yeah. I'm doing it. Uh, remember, you can roll to roll an advantage. Oh, shit. Just, just roll again. This, it's going to hit. Well, I, roll, I just rolled again. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, nice. Oh. Um, so, yeah, you hit. Go ahead and um, if you want to just roll your second hit, too, or roll damage first, whichever. Mm-hmm. Neat. Ten points of damage. Um, let's see. Uh, nice uh, uh, why did you roll damage again? Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I clicked on it by accident. I got distracted on the kids. Because I didn't. I didn't know. I was using my the iPad. And he won. Yeah. I don't want to tell them. Hold on a second. Hold on. Let me this. I think it's behind this whole. It was so good though. Let's see how it turned out. Like, I, I'm glad this is being recorded, so we have it in perpetuity. She does hit. Uh, so we'll take the eight points of damage. Uh, and the spy is dead. <laughs> Who wants to guess what she's saying right now? She's laying the smack down. What do you think she's saying? Uh, get off this thing, man. Doesn't matter who's using it. You guys share it when you share it. And you can't take turns and no one gets it. Isn't that what all Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. And if you keep fighting, I'm just going to erase it. That's yeah. it. You don't I'll put a casket on the thing, but you won't know. I don't care. Watch me. Uh, all right. So Flux uh, does kill uh, S3, and she's going to transfer her vow of enmity to S5, uh, and that will end her turn. Uh, it is S5's turn. Uh, in a panic, he's going to do the same thing and just shoot back at her with crossbow. Um, he does hit her. She takes five points of damage, and then he's going to skedaddle as well. Uh, that'll bring us to Seduceus. Yeah, I'm gonna let him run. All right, they're too far away. Let him go. No worries. Done. Torin, your turn. Um, you can just extra like, your loot or something. And you just extra <laughs> <strum> the shit. <laughs> um, I, could, I guess I could attack him, right? Once they're leaving. You got to try to get in range. Uh, they're pretty far away from you now. Oh, uh, you're a you're an eagle though, so yeah, you can get there. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I, do you have the ability to like come in, like swoop and pick them up, and like drop them in the middle of the ocean and come back? Um, <laughs> yes, but uh, they are just out of his range, so he can just get to one. Oh, uh, uh, so I can actually speed. get there. You can still attack, um, but you won't be able to cool. and move him. <laughs> All right, I'll get I'll get that too, and just f him up a little bit, dude. Hit him with the roll beak. To, roll to hit is a motherfucking <laughs> eagle, bitches. Uh, shoot, what's roll to hit on this guy? Uh, next to that beak attack, it'll say, or claw, it'll say, um, plus something to hit. Oh, five, 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 five points. Okay. Peck him. Yeah, so do a d20. <laughs> five. 
I just rolled a regular d20 and then I'll add five. Let's see. Oh, big numbers. Uh, so you miss on that one. I think as an eagle, you get a multi attack though. Is it just beak or is it yep. and beak? I can do also. It pops out every time you click away. It is called talents. Ooh, it's also plus five to hit. So we are going to roll 17th of 22. Nice. That hits. Roll damage. Cool. It is. Uh, 1d6 plus 3. Right, here comes the d6 plus 3, so 4. <laughs> big, 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 big dice. Just kind of like, rah, 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 uh, Adam. Uh, Zendry, that brings us back to you. Oh. <laughs> How close were we? Uh, how close were you to what? I was oh, flex. How close were we? Similar. Oh wait, wait. I was, I was like half listening to you guys. What? Oh. What were you guys thinking? It, 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 what Nate and I were trying to guess what you were saying. Oh, what, you, what, what were your guesses? I, 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 my guess was like, if you keep doing this, I'm gonna erase the iPad. Um, I think Nate said something like, if you guys can't, uh, you can't what did you say? <laughs> yeah. Yes, Nate. That's 100. Okay, I'll take it away. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I don't care who it is. It doesn't matter. It's mine. No, I bought it. I like, it's fine. I bought it with my discount. We're not doing this. And I was like looking and I was like, I allowed you guys to stay up two minutes past your bedtime. And you try, you're choosing you're choosing to use this time to fight with each other. Let's stop and think if this is a wise decision. Are these wise decisions that we're making right now? <laughs> Can you see the pajamas to go to bed? <laughs> yeah. Uh... <laughs> Uh, Zendry, it's your turn. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Did you guys hear me before? No. Oh, I said I'm letting them go. They're too far. Oh, okay, we're letting them go. Awesome. They run away. Uh, Sless, <clears throat> it is your turn. Uh, see, they're they're far away. I mean, yeah, I don't I don't need to do anything to them. Um, then they are gonna come back around, and they are. Uh, well, S2 is going to try and get away from Torin. Torin, um, you will get an attack of opportunity on him. Do you want to uh, roll to hit as an eagle again um, with either your call, your your beak, or your talent? Do it. Do it in the beak. Um, it is. Gosh, where'd he go? I get... Do I need to run, roll a d20 then? Same thing. Yeah. <clears throat> oh my gosh, I'm wrong. Uh, he does miss. Breadstick. Uh, this one disappears out of view as he heads into the cave system. Uh, and that will bring us to uh, Flux again. Uh, you did fell the one that was in front of you. Um, so I moved your Vow of Enmity to S5. Um, and move you a little closer towards him with the rest of your movement. You're muted, friend. Shit. <laughs> so, uh, so S3's dead, right? Yeah. S3's dead, yep. I killed him. Um, <laughs> is S5 just trying to leave? Yeah, they're both trying to get the fuck out. Into the cave system, it looks like. And don't let them get there. We don't want them, like, notifying their friends. Because the alarm spell didn't already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how the alarm spell works. Mine, mine goes off. It's right next to me. That's it. No one else hears it. I'm oh. trying to be real judicious about how I use these last couple s spell slots. So, <laughs> all right, I'll just probably move up to like Torin, I guess, and just try to go after the chase and then maybe throw. Um... You said you moved my Val of Enmity to where? To S2? Oh, S5? Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. Okay. Well, I moved. So, uh, that's what I did. S5 also moves uh, further. Oh, means they're fast, dude. Um, yeah, they're using all of their movement to, to dash and get out of there. Um, as they enter the cave system, um, they kind of disappear behind a darkened area, and you can no longer see them. Uh, you do not know where they have gone. Well, I think we should follow them. Uh, they also, have gone into the caves... Uh, and you are unsure exactly what path they have taken. 
um, uh, Torin and um, Flux as you get into this boat. You can kind of see this boat looks like it was being worked on. It's it's very badly damaged. It looks like it might have been one of the wrecks um, caused by the storms. Uh, and this this crew of villains, I guess, have been um, seemingly stripping it. You can kind of see there's a little bit of a path upwards where there's some barrels and um, some wooden planks uh, set down to be a bit of a kind of walkway or pathway. Um, you know, so it seems like they've been stripping this this wrecked ship. Of whatever Torin, let's loot it. Oh, yeah, I'm into that. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. well, let's, let's, they tried to rob <clears throat> us. Ooh, I'm going to rob them. Like, fix it so we can just light on fire again, too. That'd be fun. <laughs> Have yeah. some uh, campfire for tonight <laughs> as we're probably camping on this beach right now. <laughs> uh, and then, Torin, remember, if you're going to roll an investigation check, do it as the eagle. <laughs> Oh, shoot. Uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, so you rolled a seven. Yeah. Just add your intelligence bonus as an eagle if you have one. Yeah. Uh, which wouldn't be enough anyway, I don't think. Um, so it, it, you, as you look through it, you can tell that it seems it seems pretty picked clean. Uh, they've been working on this one probably for a few hours. You get the suspicion. Um, it is really ransacked. There's nothing still on it that you can see. As you move around it, though, um, you can kind of see a little bit of what their overall game plan seemed to be. Um, there's a bit of a interior cave uh, where you can kind of see some crates and barrels are kind of open but empty. There's basic goods in here. Nothing really stands out. Um, rope, etc. Nothing of value seems to be keep kept inside of this cave. Uh, but while you're kind of searching through the boat, you can kind of see inside deeper into um, the cave system that you followed them on. Uh, and you can see that... Get you off of my map here, would you? Go away. Go away. Uh, you can see uh, that there's kind of a fork. Uh, and so you're not sure which way the cultists went. Um, there seems to be two avenues to take. Uh, one goes kind of up and to the left. Uh, one goes up and to the right. Um, both pathways seem to have um, bits of water blocking whichever way you would take. Um, you can't quite tell how deep or how for how long. Um, you know what you can tell is there's a bit there's a bit of light coming from the pathway more to the left, as you can kind of see some torchlight <coughs> further ahead. The pathway to the right, um, the only light that's coming in is the little light that's coming in from the outside. Uh, it doesn't seem particularly well lit. Uh, can I have you roll a perception check for me, though? Dude, I'm rolling like just total garbage. Dog do. <laughs> Seventeen. Um, you. It, it's hard to make out, but you hear like splashing, 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 and then a. <laughs> uh, from that pathway to the right. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> Super sus, dude. Super sus. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, Torin, did you <laughs> did you hear that? Oh, too high up. I couldn't hear that. Torin's also. Oh, you can hear so anything? Unless you speak to Bert. I just oh, that's right. <laughs> I didn't know I if he was like <laughs> bopping around on the sand eagle or if he was like straight up flying eagle. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know if I can go at this alone, uh, with everything that we've been in and with the health that we're at. Um, I think I might want to, like, come back out and, like, call the band over. So, I'm gonna, like, pick, poke back out and just call you guys over. Guys! Got some caves! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're, we're coming. Alright, listen... When we go in here, this is what I found. There's some water. There's two, there's two like, areas we could go. We go off to the right. We go off to the left. The left seems like it has a little bit more light. But off to the right, I heard this really weird noise. I don't know what it was. It sounds kind of creepy. Uh, there's a lot of water on both sides. So, um, yeah. <laughs> if anyone has a torch, let's get our torches or something. And, like, I think we should proceed with caution. If you guys want to go that route, just letting you know. That's what we're doing. All right. <laughs> oh. I said we go to noise. <laughs> Is that you flapping your wings? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Pidgeot, <laughs> just in gust. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> right, 
don't know if I can actually talk right, to the bird. Alright. Who has torches? Do I think don't we all have torches? I got a torch. Uh you you all probably have torches. Uh additionally I have um, I have produced uh, flame Zendry, with, Sless, with the camera. Uh flux, seduceus, you can all see in the dark as well. Okay. At least up to sixty feet. Um, it's yeah. not as can bright I, as um, but you can see that dark vision. Mm -hmm. Can I produce flame as a can trip? Just to have it like Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Hand. I don't think it's a spell. Okay. No, it's not. I just. All right. So you want to like get a little fire yeah. in your hand? Sure. The little Johnny Blaze happening. Yeah. So you get... All right. What else? All right. If we're going towards the noise, right. also uh, don't worry about this boat. Torn and I looked through it. Ain't much in there. They ransacked it. And there's also a little section over off to our right that has a. A little, I'm sorry, after I left, that has uh, some, like, stuff in it. I don't know. Maybe it could be a good place to camp tonight. I don't know. But uh, just so you know, I know. Everybody wants to loot stuff, but uh, not worth their time right now. Um, so you guys start heading up this pathway, and as you get a little bit closer, uh, now that you can kind of, like, see the mouth of this tunnel system, you actually see that the water goes, uh, you know, a bit forward, and then suddenly... Um, kind of turns downward and it actually seems like it's a completely submerged tunnel um, the water seems to have a bit of movement to it um, so it does seem like it's leading somewhere um, but you would have to swim underneath the water a bit um, to kind of get wherever the terminus is um, so who's going first <laughs> who's the best okay. swimmer uh... <laughs> probably not me since I have all the the body armor. <laughs> you don't feel water. Just sink to the bottom. <laughs> also, I'm flying right now, so I'm good. <laughs> Just like hover over. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go first and uh, go to go to my doom. <laughs> All right. So, Lucius, so you're going first. Uh, what's the marching order? Who's I'll going go after? Middle. I'll go in the middle. I'll go after you. I'll go second. Yeah, and then I'll go. I'll go after. And, yeah. Flying, so I don't know if it matters. Uh, oh, what time of day is it, by the way, Nate? Um, I think when you guys got here, it was relatively early-ish. I would probably say it's like afternoon time now. Not quite, not quite okay. evening. The sun is still up, but okay. it's it's hard to gauge time um, by light. Specifically, one, the sun's really hard to see. Obviously, you're in a cave, but even when you're outside, because the storm here is so thick, um, it kind of just yeah. some of that stuff. Uh, Torin, I'm going to actually say you stay behind unless you decide to change out of an eagle. I'm going to stay eagle for a little bit. Because, yeah, I think you can stay up to that for a couple hours now, um, given uh, your new abilities. But everybody else kind of gets into this space. Um, as you guys are swimming through it, it's a little bit dark, and all of a sudden you just see these little specks of green light kind of flash like bright, these tiny little specks of green light. And you notice um, as you get kind of closer and, and are able to kind of get a little bit more of your vision as you're underwater, you notice the, the, the green light seems to move in pairs. And then all of a sudden, as they kind of start to congregate closer to each other, you can tell that these are the eyes of like dozens of fish in here, just kind of like boop, 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 swimming around with these glowing green eyes. And oddly, they seem to show some kind of sentience. It's weird. They're like looking at you. Like, boop, boop. They're not attacking or in any way being hostile. They're kind of staying out of your way, but they're just kind of like boop, 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 as you swim by them. Freaked out, you continue onward, um, and as you do, you do see that it kind of um, leads into a bit of a beach um, inside another open cavern system. Uh, the first thing you recognize as you get here is the smell. It is putrid uh, and moldy and old um, and briny all at the same time, um, and you start to break water, and pretty quickly you recognize what made that terrible sound before. Uh, before. Uh, there is a very fresh corpse missing its head. Seems to be wearing the paraphernalia of one of the sailors you had uh, chased in here, so to speak. Um, and uh, you kind of see that there are other corpses in this space, all kind of thrown around in what appears to be these beds of seaweed, um, kind of piled into different areas, almost like seeding. And as you kind of look up and get out of the water and shake off some of it, you see what can only be described as the ugliest creatures you have seen in your existence. Um, there are these three women-type creatures um, 
with long, greasy, uh, like black hair, um, really disfigured faces of varying sizes, um, with this like different coloration of skin that goes from like this limey green uh, almost to like a sea blue, but even that kind of has a sickening scent to it. Um, and the one that's kind of leading out has the head of uh, this particular sailor, which is now almost just a mess because most of its skin has been removed. And she kind of looks up and she goes, <laughs> Oh, more, more visitors today. Oh, these cultists were a wonderful addition to our home. What brings you lot here for us to uh, have wonderful bits of conversation? Another one pipes up on the back. Yes, we haven't had visitors in so long. <laughs> the third one just kind of pipes up. You don't even really hear much. You just hear like this chewing noise. And it's just... And she spits out like a little bone. You can't really tell the, the impression of it. I just slap Seduceus on the back. I'm like, this is all you, my friend. I'm at it. <laughs> Oh, oh, don't make us talk to the pretty yeah. one. We hate uh, the pretty ones. Surely there's someone more. Hmm. Our style. Uh, so do you see <laughs> yeah. He's a little fluffy. Uh, wow. <clears throat> uh, thanks for killing our attackers. We, uh, you know, don't mean to <laughs> intrude on your uh, dinner. We were just looking for the people who attacked us, uh, but it seems like you took care of them. Thank you so, so much. Um, yeah, I think I think my friends and I are going to probably turn around and go back the oh, way we were headed. Oh, no, don't here. leave so soon. The other one just kind of like chops down a little more like, and like quickly yeah. moves over to where you guys are at. By the way, I put a picture of what they look like in case anyone wants to see. Uh, Terrifying. <laughs> Ew. Uh, and the, the leader goes, no, 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 come, come speak with Granny. Granny wants to know more of the outside world. We've been in this cave so long. Please, we can help you. Of course, we're always willing to make a bargain. We wouldn't want to. We wouldn't want to let you go so quickly. Uh, and as she's kind of talking, you suddenly see the fish with the glowing green eyes strangely like put their eyes over the water and they're all staring at you again as you like, turn to leave towards the water. Please stay. Talk a while. Tell us what you're here for. Perhaps if you can give us something useful, uh, we can give you something useful. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Do you guys do you guys want to bargain with them or what? Well, I mean, give them yourself too, right? Is that what they want? No. No, <laughs> we don't want the pretty one. The pretty one's really good for us. No, thank you. Yeah, not the pretty one. We don't want the pretty one. The one that's been chewing finally speaks. Jesus Christ. Do um, they have food? Ask if they have food. <laughs> Shh, Auntie. Don't ruin it now. We might be able to get another meal today. Are they riding in a crab? <laughs> <laughs> they are. It's true. Um... Well, we we were we were chasing um, a storm god over in this area. That's kind of how we came to this, you know, little island uh, where we're at right now. So I don't know if you have any information. Maybe you could give us uh, about that. Um, maybe we can work out some kind of a trade that does not involve eating uh, any of my friends. Hmm. Well. I see you have an instrument with you. Perhaps if you were to play me a little tune, we could help you. You see, we don't necessarily care for these cultists you seek. We wouldn't exactly mind if they weren't here anymore. But of course, we don't want to give anything away for free. And I always appreciate a good dance. And she like touches your nose and she kind of moves down a little bit. Uh, the other one behind her um, seems to kind of talk as well. She goes, "Nanny, nanny, um, ask ask if they've been to Leylon uh, or any other city soon. I do so miss uh, the travelers from Leylon. They tasted so wonderful. Ask if they've if they have any any information about other places and things that they've seen." 
<laughs> and the other one just goes back, I want food. Just ask if they have more food. And they're all now starting to congregate closer and closer towards you. <laughs> okay. Let's uh, let's calm down a bit. Um, I can happily play you a song, or if you you know tell us maybe what you like to eat, we can go get food. I like food to eat food. You. What food do you have? Just give us food. <laughs> I don't know if we have any so food. Hungry, on. Always hungry. But maybe we could go get some food, get some fresh fish. Mm, or not good enough. Water. Well, mm, I see food on you <clears> first, and I smell foul. Poultry mm. nearby. I smell wings <laughs> and feathers. And food. Oh, that's oh. that. That's our friend. You can't. You can't eat our friend. I thought it was the, the testes, dude. Oh, yeah, 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 we've we've definitely uh, been uh, traveling all across the land. We can definitely tell you about some of our adventures if you want to know about some places or things that we've seen. Yes, yes, please, please, please share the one that was kind of behind the other one on her left. Tell us, tell us more of outside. Tell us more of outside. <laughs> oh, my God. <clears throat> She's like right on top of you now. Uh, very excited. <laughs> and her, uh, her on breath top of is you. like almost befuddling. Wow. Well, <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take a small step back. Uh, no, guys, no, was... tell us now. Tell us now. <laughs> tell us all of the things now. Well, what was the name of that forest where we, where we met the lizard people? What was what was that called? Uh, the the oh. mirror of dead men. Mirror yeah, of dead, yeah, men. Yeah, dead, men. dead men. Yeah, we were at a you know a swampy forest um, right outside of a town and we met some lovely lizard people. Um, oh, maybe my you... home, my home, where I'm from, where I'm from. I haven't been home yeah. in so long. How how is my swamp? It's it, it's really beautiful. And 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 uh, uh Seducees, hey, remember when we um when we fought and <laughs> killed those big giant like nasty like ogre things and and we yeah. we, we got um some of their body parts. Uh, it was really, do you have really do you have fight. them still? Do you have their body parts still? The trolls were so kind. You <laughs> see, they were so wonderful and lovely. It would be awesome to have a um, keepsake of them. Uh, I don't know. Do we still have any troll bodies? I'm gonna parts? whisper to Seth. Uh, um, I still have one of the testicles. Do we still have my, a testicle? My inventory says two troll testicles, but I can't remember if I just forgot to remove them. Uh, I think you still have the troll <laughs> penis. You know, bust that out. Bust that out. Whip it out. I never had that. They're going to no, love it, that. Yeah, you I had, had that. It. I'm pretty sure. Yes, you, you wore it as like a scarf, remember? No. <laughs> a million percent, I'm positive you had it. Do I still have it? Roll back the tape. Roll back the tape. <laughs> Do I still have it in my inventory, technically? I'm pr- I don't know if you ever put it in your inventory, but I'm sure you're pretty sure you were picked up. I'm pretty sure you use okay. it as a pillow every night, dude. So. Okay, well, I'm going to go with that. I still have a piece of this <laughs> yeah. troll. It, so you mix. look into your pouch, and it is just like putrid and old and rancid. You've had this thing now for damn near a month, uh, just lacking around. You, uh, Even your charms, it was hard. No wonder people were being so standoffish. Um, but she pulled it out, and she's just like in love with this. Thing. She just like grabs it. She's like, oh, oh, this is... This is exciting. This is uh, smell, uh, she's just like smelling it. This, this is wonderful. You get the sense this is very much her vibe, and she like just walks back in awe to her little uh, shell that she's been sitting on. I'll treasure this. It made me very happy today. Thank, thank you, thank you. <laughs> oh, well, typical, typical crowd pleaser over here. Uh, listen, I'll let you. I'll let you keep keep that. Uh, but I really would love some help in kind of you know where to go amongst all these caverns to kind of locate. No, you um, gave her something. Back. I want something too. Uh, we all get something or no. I want food, food or drink. Fill my belly, or I will eat all of you instead. <laughs> I'll eat all of you instead. <laughs> oh God, uh, I I don't know that we have any uh, food. On us at the moment. Can if you, you do not have food on you, then you are food. Mm. Mm. Oh no, you you wouldn't like the way I taste. I think we need to let him eat Torin as the eagle. Oh. Okay, <laughs> bring me the eagle. Eagle sound mm, delicious. 
I've heard they taste like the alligator. Same. They can't eat. Oh, yeah, freedom. <laughs> Left freedom ring. Oh my god. <laughs> Torrin's not even there. He's like uh, around the other villains yeah. in the room. So. Yeah. We'll, we'll have to go get him. I'm Tell trying to this. stay away from these smelly bras. Dude. <laughs> okay. So uh, here's the thing. If they haven't left the cave and we tell them... Oh wait. Damn it. I don't want them to hear me. I want to whisper to my friends. Out of earshot of these creatures. They haven't left this cave in forever. We can tell them that we're gonna go get the eagle. We can leave, and they're not gonna follow us because they don't leave. <laughs> Roll a um, stealth check, Flux, to see if they don't notice this. Oh my god! Shit! <laughs> Fifteen, baby. Uh, they don't seem to notice. Food, feed, feed, food now. Food, or we eat you instead. Food. Didn't we just give him a huge D, dude? <laughs> <laughs> no, that is that is a trophy. We don't need trophies. Well, very, mm -hmm. um, that's very for that's for other um, things. Interesting. You see her kind of look down to the rest of like the sailor that's down there, and just like rips off a piece of his flesh and just starts like chewing down on that like it's jerky. Mm, food. Need more. Never, never fall. Need more now. Nate, well, if, me. If, if a creature is charmed, are they kind of like in a trance where like I could kind of ask them the things I want to ask them without them being all weird? Uh, it depends on the type of charm, but it could, yeah. Usually charm gives you like advantage on persuasion checks, that kind of stuff. Some charms just let that happen if they fail it. It just depends on the spell. What spell are you trying to cast? I was just looking at like one of my other actions, which was enthralling performance, and it just sure. says I could potentially charm up to four creatures, but I just didn't know if I charmed them, would that actually benefit us yeah. in this moment? No, that, that would, and one did ask, um, the, the kind of main one in front of you did say she likes music and song. Yeah, so maybe I could try playing a song to kind of like trick them to see if I could, you know, <clears throat> charm them unknowingly. Cool. And I think they have to do uh, DC 15 mm -hmm. in order to, to resist that charm. Um, so uh, give us a little bit of what that, that feels like. Are you just going to kind of whip out the loot and start playing? What's the game plan there? Uh, yeah, I'm going I'm to whip out whip out the old loot and just start strumming some, some sweet chords for these uh, disgusting little creatures. But uh, you know, a little... Oh, nice. I just want him to change his mic settings so it doesn't cut out so much. Oh yeah, is it bad? Let's hold on. Yeah, it's like every every <laughs> note I have another note. Um, Wait, what about so what like about? better? Better or no? That's better. <clears throat> you see the main one start to step up and she's like frolicking around dancing a little bit. Uh, as she dances, you see like these little like bugs and maggots kind of fall off of her and kind of slough off as well. <laughs> God. It's just disgusting. Uh, but they did all fail their checks, and so they all kind of look at you and like are just like, <laughs> so, yes, wonderful. I'm not even hungry. That's so weird. Yes, I love this music. Oh, the music is so good. Please don't stop. More music. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> keep playing a little bit, and I'm just like. <clears throat> so, have you guys seen you know a storm god around here? Um, not, not Talos himself, no, no, but his worshippers all throughout, you must be cautious. Their leader is, is, <laughs> is very fun. She'll kill anybody she wants to. She loves Talos so much. <laughs> yes, she's, she's quite scary. Be careful, her room, her room is a, is one large shrine to Talos. If you do not so correct deference to Talos, you might find it difficult to move in such a place. And don't enter her pool. The pool is only meant for those who are loyal to Talos. Entering more can <laughs> hurt your brain. Don't go in there. <laughs> so how would we find this leader without going into the pool? Uh, the pool is, is uh, in the center of the room. You would just have to step 
around it. I'm sure you're smart enough to figure out how not to go in there. One more chamber full of water to pass through, and then you'll be inside her shrine. And then, of course, there are the others, uh, more of the Talos worshippers, but we don't think they like each other very much. Seems as though they don't like their particular leader here. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Where is the chamber of the leader? Is it close by? Mm, directly behind this one. If you passed, if, if you came in here, you passed the other fork. If you went the other direction, you would have gotten there instead. Huh. Interesting. More treasures to be had in this cave, though. We've seen the sailors pulling the wreckage that they pulled in from the storms. <laughs> That's why they hide here. They send the storms to wreck the ships. They take the sailors to get the wreckage. And then they loot the ships to sell later. And fund their little campaign on land, you see. <laughs> it's all very clever. <laughs> what else should I ask them? Anything? <laughs> At this point now, they're all like dancing, and one that's kind of uh, more robust than the others now is kind of just like flopping around as her like she's flinging whatever bits of food are like coming off of her that have been lost for who knows how long to just like the folds of her hair and skin. Uh, it's quite a sight of disgusting and putrescence. So. Yeah, I've never been so disgusted while playing in my whole life. <laughs> uh, do you guys want to ask them anything else, or what? No, I don't think I have anything. No. Wow, well, thank you, ladies. That was <laughs> lovely, and I hope you enjoyed the song. We did, we did. Are you coming back for more? Please come back for more. Yes, more, more, more. Yes. You know what? Yeah, we're going to go check out uh, the chamber where that leader is, and we're going we're gonna to come back after that, and we'll play a song before we leave. Huh, that sounds that sounds awesome. We'd love that. So good to get guests. So good to get guests. Uh, and they yeah, all kind of go yeah. back onto the seaweed piles and just kind of wait there. Still kind of like staring, uh, a little bit zoning out kind of off in the distance as you uh, are still um, activating them. <laughs> okay, everybody run, everybody run. Yeah, and... <laughs> <laughs> you notice they stop playing, so do you see they still seem to be um, enthralled. It doesn't seem like it's worn off yet. Yeah, the uh, little enchantment, yeah, it'll last for what? An hour. An hour. <laughs> no, so you kind of head back, you do see that Torin is um, still um, uh, still there. Um, kind of <laughs> Floating around. Uh, as you guys enter back into space. So according to um, <coughs> the, the hags, um, there's more um, there's more cultists on the other side. Um, they seem to suggest the leader uh, is through this path. Um, not that you know exactly what's beyond it, uh, but that there are other cultists somewhere else in this space as well, uh, as well as some treasure. So they don't want to hang out with the hags anymore? They seem pretty cool. Well, you can <laughs> definitely go fly in That's all you do? Or... I heard some good song and some... Yeah, they were really dude. interested in in, uh, in poultry and wanting to eat, so, you yeah. know. I saying. saved your feathery ass. Thanks. <laughs> um, uh, I know we want to explore more, but... Uh, how's everybody's spell slots? How's everybody's health? Uh, we, what do you think about resting a little? Do you feel like we're in a good spot to rest a little bit? I mean, we could we could try. Wait, we can only go west or north, right? Or you can go out back the way you came. Um, there was another entrance to the caves. Um, you know, out out near here where you guys kind of passed, um, but you just pursued the other sailors yeah. up this way instead um, as they were trying to flee you and unknowingly went to their deaths is this ship on the map is this actually like a full-blown like shipwreck or is this or like what is this uh, <laughs> it is one of the wrecked ships um so it, it's like the hull is damaged and broken it's been stripped of its resources i mean we could try just going in there and hiding and taking a little rest yeah like could like is, is it 
damaged enough where we could like find a place to hide or no? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it's still intact. You can try to get inside of it. There's a, there's definitely like a lower ship. It's not like a big ship like the galleon you came on. Um, but there's there's room to like get in there and, and hide. Certainly can give mm. it a shot if you're trying to find a little bit of solace for a bit. Yeah, I mean, if you guys want to, maybe that's a good idea. Kind of be out of sight. Kind of take a little rest and then go back and... Probably want to loot some stuff. See if we can get anything to there's help nothing us. to loot. Yeah, well, there's nothing there's like, to loot. Well, not, not in here, but the other... Oh, in the caves, yeah. But yeah. We should be full strength before we head in there, especially if where we're going is the, uh, the, the main baddie. Yeah. All right, well, let's try it. Let's, let's go in that ship and see if we can find a spot to do that. Are you guys getting the ship? Are you guys going to take a short rest? Are you going to try to take a long rest? What's the game plan? I think I would need, I'd want a, a long rest to just um, reset all of my spell slots. Um, so a long rest means you'll be here for eight hours at least. And what time is it right now? What do you think? Um, I just need someone to take watch, probably. We would for sure need someone to take a while. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I feel you though. Flux, like, might as well just try and do a long rest before we head into unknown dangers. Yeah. So I guess whoever has the most HP. Um... Yeah. I'm down for a long rest just so I can get my stuff. Do you think it's safe? I mean, I don't think it's safe, but I think, I mean, we could try. He's still pulling up on the, the wire he had. Yeah. <laughs> you never let yeah. it go. He's had it the whole time. <laughs> I don't think it's safe, but. <laughs> uh, making... I need uh, wire. Making a pillow with this wire. Jeez. Okay. Yeah. 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 You, you just lost your pillow a few minutes ago, so. <laughs> Oh. Here we go. Uh, Here we go. <laughs> oh, okay. Who is who's doing watch for trying to assist rest? Um, first off, are you guys trying to like hide inside of this boat? Oh yeah. Give me up in that. I yeah. would like everyone to roll a stealth check for me. Oh. Okay. A little group check action. Uh -huh. Now the game log's loading pretty quickly, so that's cool. Um, Zendry, what'd you get? Oh, it's two and one, well. Awesome. Fifteen. Uh, all right, for the most part, you're able to kind of hide in a pretty good spot kind of near the bottom of the area. Um, you've set up um, some of the information, like other things that you see, like there's some canvases and tarps that are around here, and you've been able to kind of, what you feel like, carve out maybe a very tight, let's call it intimate space. Uh, but for the most part, it seems like it'd be pretty hard to see into the ship where you guys are. So you feel relatively secure. Um, uh, so who's going to try and take first watch or at least kind of keep a look at while everybody else is up? <coughs> I mean, I Could can. Be. I'm, I'm hurting, right. but I, I can. Okay. Who's hurting the least? I'm only down to two spell slots. I mean, I have the most hit points, feet. I think. I'm at 47, oh, yeah. so... But you'll still get a rest, right? As long as we, like, rotate. If we rotate and you stay long enough. If you stay for, like, a, if you if you can stay for a full, like, eight or ten hours, you should be able to have enough time to get everyone to take a long rest. Um, anyone who can't finish that long rest and you have to end up staying up that long, if you end up staying up that long, you'll take a point of exhaustion. Mm -hmm. So it just depends. There's th there's definitely some risk involved because you're you're basically trying to make camp in the middle of a hostile area. <laughs> and just do a short rest then. Do a short rest, reset our spell slots. You get not not for your particular classes, no. Right. Um, it'll reset some features, um, but it won't get spell slots back. Y'all. I have a decent amount of spell slots left, so. Yeah, I need mine reset. <clears throat> All right, well, I'll 
I'll take first watch, and then I'll just tap out with someone else. We'll see what happens. Come snuggle with me when you're ready. Um, yeah. So why don't we take a quick break? Um, before we go to break, um, if anyone needs like a bio break, get more water, etc. Uh, Seducius, can I have you roll a um, perception check for me? Yeah. All right, let's take a little break, and then we'll be back in a few minutes. Uh, so, uh, okay, so do you see us? You rolled it. Um, so <coughs> as you guys are there, you do see a few people, um, walking by. Um, they're kind of looking around, trying to suss out stuff, see where the other people are. Um, you know, this is after at least about three or four hours. You notice that people are really starting to investigate what's going on. Um, <coughs> you, he you overhear, um, these, these two kind of thugs, cultists talk to each other. Um, and basically here you, you, you get the sense that like the people that were working here before were on the edge of, of leaving anyway. Um, they were, they were <coughs> poor at their, their faith in Talos. They didn't really care for the work that they were doing. All they ever did was complain and, and whine. Uh, they weren't, um, particularly thrilled with the assignments that they were given to, um, pull in the wreckage. Uh, and so, uh, it was expected that they left. Um, they kind of walk around a little bit more. Um, one kind of mutters, maybe the hags ate them, good for them. Uh, and then mm -hmm. they kind of walk off the rest of the rounds. Um, a couple more hours pass. It, for the most part, seems pretty quiet. Um, not a lot of other concern there. Um, who's taking watch after you? Um, I can if we're, I'm full health, right? Yep. Technically. <clears throat> right, so it's been it. about six hours for you, enough time for you to kind of get some rest in. Um, uh, so if everyone but Seducius wants to hit long rest, Torin, can I have you do uh, a um, perception check for me as well? Yeah. <coughs> um, so the day kind of gets on. You guys kind of went down pretty early in the evening or in the afternoon. So it, it's now about nighttime. It's pretty hard to hear in this place. Um but uh, you, you don't see anyone approaching, but off in the distance you hear this. <coughs> <coughs> just like this really deep <coughs> hacking cough um, that you can't quite place. It seems to be further <coughs> into the cave system. Um, not, not kind of in that upward path that you were told was leaders, kind of from another area. Hmm. Um, but the night progresses, no one else kind of checks in. Um, you get the assumption based on what Seduce has shared with you that that it's maybe not great, but wasn't unexpected that the um, the crewmen that were working here just kind of abandoned their post. <coughs> and I'm asleep right now, right? You are. Okay. Um, Torrent, anything you want to do before you wake up your compatriots? Mm, no. <laughs> um, so everyone kind of wakes up. Um, uh, Seduces, you can also hit um, that long rest button if you'd like. Um, it's it's you know you guys are now awake, but it's still pretty late in, in the in the nighttime. So right now it's probably about 11 p.m., 12 p.m. I'm um, oh, sorry, 12 a.m. Uh, so just about midnight. Um, there is no sun outside. Here's where um, the concern is that Torin didn't quite catch. Um, tide has really started to roll in. Um, the lower portion of the cave where the ship is is inaccessible due to water. 
Um, it is starting <coughs> to turn into this area pretty quickly as well. You get the sense you've maybe got another hour before this whole cave system, or at least this bottom portion of the cave system, fills up with water and will be inescapable. Mm. <laughs> inescapable. I need to head oh. in. What about what about the other parts of the beach that we like travel up? up All covered in water from. at this point. The tide has covered it. Got it. Okay. So really, your only pathways back now are up uh, into the main chamber uh, or um, to the right back to the hags. Well, we're not going back to those hags, so... Let's go main chamber. Up. Let's go full send. Mm-hmm. Main chamber it is, then. I'm down to that. Let's go. Let's go. Um, so Let's you guys go. start walking up... Uh, through this space, you do see a bit of a uh, open kind of pool and pit um, in this area as well. Uh, let me describe what you start to see. Um, as you kind of like traverse this little shallow pool, um, you can kind of see it, it, the cave system goes in and then up a little bit into a um, rockier space. And while the first few steps of this rocky kind of lift um, are damp the rest is relatively dry you get the sense the tide doesn't go any further than this pool that you're crossing here um and so this area doesn't necessarily flood uh, but when the tide is in there are no exits essentially this is uh, a safe place to be while the tide's in uh, but you can't leave until the tide is back out um, but in front of you is this kind of open chamber relatively tall for the space at least about 10 15 feet tall until the ceiling and the rocky ceiling you can kind of see above it in the center of the um in the center of the uh, room is a maybe like 10 foot wide um, uh, cutout pool of water that seems to be boiling, uh, roiling, and it's almost like a jacuzzi almost, like this natural spa. Um, but it's, it's quite aggressive. Um, and as um, you start to enter into it, um, you see this figure of this female half elf. You can kind of just see the points of her ears stick out just beyond her hair. Um, She's wearing um, leather armor with like a metal um, kind of metal shoulder plate um, kind of starting to step back out. Uh, and she um, kind of walks out of this pool of water um, that she had maybe just her, her legs in. And she laughs uh, as she sees you and she goes, <laughs> now you didn't think that I wasn't expecting you, did you? You troublesome lot. You've been um, keeping an eye on the things that you've done. You thought you could take over the Tower of Storms back then, didn't you? Well, no matter. We'll get that back soon enough. Our masters are here already, and whatever you do here, it'll be uh, insufficient, let's say, in an effort to stop Talos and the wonderful things that we've had here. Before I kill you, I guess I should ask, is there anything you'd like to say last? <coughs> You ain't killing nothing, dog. We come in peace. I really <laughs> hope Torn really said it like that. You ain't killing nothing, dog. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just gonna say, take us to Talos and we'll let you live. Maybe. <laughs> you are unworthy of seeing Talos, you fool. Myself, the Reef Reaver, haven't, uh, have only been graced with his presence but a few times. Course, oh, I've seen him a few times. It's no big deal, dude. Mm. Deception deal. will get you really nowhere here with me, uh, my scary <laughs> friend. But you do get to harness a bit of his gifts, I can tell. Uh, lightning is quite a powerful tool that he gives all of us. And you see a little bit of, like, crackling energy come from her hands. Hmm. Well, I will give you an option if that's the case. And if you are a... Um, devout worshiper as you say kneel before Talos now and perhaps I'll find you a more than significant place in this army of his the battle is coming soon whether you want it to or not oh we're ready yeah we're not we're not kneeling for anyone I got a lightning bolt ready for you fine then face schedule uh, and she kind of uh, raises both of her hands, and as she does, you see these like uh, wispy uh, shapes of clouds start to kind of materialize behind her, and they form into the, the shape of these like two massive dogs. Uh, and I need everyone to roll initiative for me. 
Here we go. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I can't do anything tonight for damage, so I, have to... I rolled a one. So... Same, same. I got the breadstick. No. I got the breadstick, no, bre dog. You guys talked all that shit, and that's just uh, like dude, one. I haven't rolled over a ten to that, I don't think. It's, all right. it's just initiative. It'll be fine. I got 14, dog. I got 10. I guess you'll have to figure out how to fight these smoke dogs. <laughs> uh, let me get your health reset, too. Uh, what is that, 18? All right, Flux, what do we get? 14. 14. Seducius got a twenty. Oh, that's not yours. Four. Okay, not as good. Uh, Sless got a three. Torin got a one. And then Zendry, what'd you get? Ten. Ten. I don't know why, Nate, but your camera, my view of you, is real blotchy. Blotchy. Yeah. Are you talking specifically about the camera mm. or my complexion? No, That's just the marks on his skin. No. My view. <laughs> if I'm looking at you in your little square, it's all like... Yeah. It looks look like a scrambled, a scrambled channel. <laughs> you must be tapping in that Freddy Wi-Fi. Oh, yeah. You know how it goes. <laughs> uh, Alrighty, Flux, that puts you up first. Tight. Alright, well, if she's going to bust out smoke dogs... Um, I'm going to actually, for the first time ever, cast uh, Find Speed. Okay. Um, and I want my creature to take the form of a Mastiff. Okay. It's like giant dog. Um, and from what I understand and what I read is that, depending on my DM, if my DM is ever so gracious, if I can use my Steed or my Mastiff to attack using some of my um, my smite attacks. Uh, that's very if, I, if I'm incorrect, please uh, let me know if that's a thing. Because I was reading through it. I don't know if that's a real thing. I was reading on like D and D <laughs> blogs and stupid yeah. stuff. <laughs> was what I read, but I don't know. This is all your game sir. So I'm just double checking. Uh, you said a mastiff? Mm -hmm. Like a dog? A giant dog, yeah. yeah. A I bull mastiff? I don't know if a mastiff would count as a steed for you. It's got to be an animal you can ride. It says here in the um, in the description. Uh -huh. It's like um, appearing in an unoccupied space within <laughs> range. The steed takes on a form that you choose. A warhorse, a pony, a camel, an elk, or a mastiff. I mean, that's true. Um, a massive is meant like if you're like a halfling and you need a smaller type of animal. Oh, got it. Um, <laughs> All I, right, so war horse then. Yeah, I'll allow that. Uh, here's the only thing. In in the smite, I don't know where you read it, but in the smite um, thing, it says a melee attack. Uh, I'm just going to double check that it's a melee weapon attack or an actual melee attack. With the melee yeah. weapon attack, your massive wouldn't count as a Never. weapon, <laughs> so I don't know if I would give no. you quite that much. I will allow well, it to have its own then. attack. <clears throat> if you want to use a bonus action to to have an attack, I will allow that. To have an attack, okay, nice, um, cool. <laughs> Okay, so I don't technically have to um, be able to ride this right now. It's like I can send it to go do things. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So I think, so I'm sorry, I'm just rereading some of this description because I want to make sure I'm using this correctly. 
<laughs> this giant horse appears. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah. My patroner. Um. Hold on. Leave me alone. <laughs> okay. Well, then, if you're gonna allow a um a bonus action of like an attack, then um. I want it to be able to do like a trample. Okay. Um, so I would love for it to um, go after um, the woman who, what's her, I forgot her name. Gadriel. Gadriel? Is that, is that, oh, Gadriel. Gadriel, okay. the Reef um, Gadriel, the Reef Reaver, whatever. Uh, I want, um, <laughs> I want Mr. Ed over here to, <laughs> to go <laughs> Gallop and trample over Gadriel. All right, she's gonna give it a shot. Let's see. What Go happens. Ed, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, horse moves no. at least twenty feet in a straight line. Um, he, he's not he's not twenty feet away from her, so he couldn't do the trampling charge. But I'll let it attack with its hooves. Do it. It's a pretty tight space, so we can't like charge into her. Uh, okay, so <laughs> he he does get in there. He's actually gonna end up stepping in the pool. We'll talk about that here in a bit. Um, but does he hit her? He does. So she takes 11 points of damage um, from this horse that kind of like suddenly appeared just as she hits it. But he is in the pool uh, as he tried to like step close to her. Uh, so. Did he get electrocuted? Uh, if a creature not favored by Talos. Yeah, he's going to take 4d10. It is nice to roll a bunch at once, though. Uh, all right, so two, five, seven, seven, 14 points of damage to your war horse uh, as he steps into this, and you just see him, like, neigh in pain uh, as he's, like, kicking at her uh, while he's inside. The How room. many? What's his, what's his total? Um, <laughs> Nin 19. <laughs> Shit. I have all to right, double-check if lines he'd give him more, but uh, I just gave Mr. Okay. Ed what the default was for Warhorse. Uh, but that'll end your turn, Flex, okay. or are you moving? Yes. Um, uh, no, I'm going to stay there, but can I... It would, I can't do another bonus action, huh? Because that was my bonus action. Correct. Never mind. Okay, I'm good. All right, that'll bring Never us mind. to the Evoker, who is going to take the opportunity as Mr. Ed is rearing in pain to step back into this kind of back chamber a bit. Uh, and then she's just going to fucking let loose uh, with some spells. <laughs> this is going to suck. Uh, mm. Let's see. What do we want to do here? <laughs> All right. Um, All right, so um, I need, as she kind of steps back and she just laughs at the whole situation, uh, and she goes, you see, Talos is quite masterful of everything in this area. And she just kind of starts cackling her hands together, and you just see these lightning kind of energy start to spurt out, and she goes, face me now. And she just, like, shoots out this huge, massive bolt of lightning straight down the middle. Um, she's going to go for Flux, because Flux is the first person that went for her. Uh, Flux, I need you to make a... Um, Dexterity saving throw for me. He eight. Okay. Uh, so this um <laughs> this this bolt of lightning just <sighs> crashes into you, um and it it just stuns you and drops you to your knees. You take forty five points of damage, uh from this massive lightning bolt. As it hits you though. <laughs> The, the bolt of electricity isn't done. It's still kind of shaking off of you and starts spouting off in other directions. I need Zendri, Seduceus, and Sless to also make dexterity oh. saving throws. Oh, man. Come on, baby. Oh, gosh. Oh, God. Hey, aren't you glad we took that long rest, though? Because if this had happened, like... Uh, I don't that, know if it was good that you took that long rest because this was basically the only way you could have traveled. Uh, the, the tide fucked you is really what happened. 
Um, all right, so I need all of you guys are also going to take some damage here. Uh, and you guys are going to take 30 points of damage as this <laughs> light bulb just cracks off of you. And in the back, uh, Gadriel is just laughing maniacally uh, as you've clearly entered this space, not really understanding uh, the full might of Talos. <laughs> Uh <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, we lost thirty and wait uh flux okay. how much did you lose? <laughs> Forty five. Well, I have 45. fifteen health points, my friend. Now the touch mm -hmm. rate, we good? Yeah. None of you make right, go. so <laughs> we also can't be uh mad at me for it. Fuck the long rest. <laughs> uh, in either case, it ends her turn. And that'll bring us to Zendry. Oh, I have my. no idea. Zendry, think of everything we've learned. <laughs> everything that we learned. She's coming in hot. Like, run? <laughs> Where could we run? We can't run. Yeah, we're stuck. Yeah, you're stuck. Oh. The tide is up. There's not a way out of this. Uh oh, we don't have that deployable boat. Uh, yeah, that's actually not a bad idea. That is an option. You still have that? Jerry yeah, carries have it. it, or Celeste carries it. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I can walk on water, so I'm good. It's it's y'all that I'm worried about. <laughs> I have full health and I can walk on water, dog. I'm Jesus up in here. Yo. <laughs> Bye. <It's>, uh, later. <laughs> uh, he out of there. He said, "I have. I've just been wanting to kill one party member somewhere. So I just, you know, it hasn't happened yet. It's, it's gotta happen eventually." I don't know. Maybe she's weak to something, but it's a long shot after all that damage. I'm gonna use my. Meow meow. Okay. Meow meow's up. Uh, third level. Okay. And it's gonna go straight towards E1. Yeah, I love it. Whatever her name is. Uh, I'm gonna let you cheat a little bit. Uh, technically your meow meow shouldn't be able to attack on the same turn. On what same turn? Uh, on, on your same turn. Because you remember you gotta call it out first. I thought if I just use my spiritual weapon, it works. Um, on, so, like, your your first kind of go with it is to get it out onto the battlefield. Uh, and then it's a bonus action, so you still have actions to be able to do. Um, you know, if you want to go and attack something on your own. Uh, but I'll, I'll say if you'd rather use your action to have it attack the evoker and you just stay back here, that's fine, too. But normally what you would do is have an action, your bonus action. Uh, and your 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 casting of um, your spiritual weapon is your bonus action. But if you if you want to like run up and attack one of these guys, if you want to run up, you can get to her and just attack her directly. Um, or I'll say if you'd rather attack her with your spiritual weapon, I'll let your action be uh, hitting her with uh, with uh, the meow meow. Yeah, we'll do that. I appreciate that. Uh, roll to hit. Eleven. That Damn it. misses. Just misses, actually. Mother fucker. Do you want to move anywhere on your turn? Or you want to stay there? Yeah, that was gonna uh, happen. Uh, maybe get like out of her direct line of sight. Um, you can kind of like make it into this little hole, or you can even run downwards if you'd rather be down here. And get like here-ish. You can get like here. -ish. I'm towards the bottom, okay. I'll up a little bit. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Awesome. All right, and Zen's return. It's gonna bring us to one of these uh, massive creatures who's just gonna run through the pool and get to the war horse and start going for the war horse. Uh, what do we have for you, my friend? Yeah, he's just gonna use his fiery breath. Or his freezing breath, excuse me, on this dude. Uh, what is it? DC 12? 
Your horse fails. Um, so your horse takes 15 points of damage as this cone of ice just like shoots through it. Uh, I'm going to just double check and see if your horse technically should be dead. Um, based on the flying steed spell. Flying steed. So doesn't it say when it drops to zero, it disappears? Mm hmm and then I can dismiss it at any time, right? As an action? Correct, yeah. I'm just trying to see what its uh, points are total. Speed of steed has been chosen from Additionally, if your steed has been chosen from Yeah, so he, he's he's gone. The the health points that he gets are just another one. Um, so Warhorse kind of like disappears. Mr. Ed uh, is off of the plane. But you do get the sense he did take the brunt of a big attack for you instead. Uh, so that'll end... His turn, and that brings us to Seducius. Yo, <clears throat> I am going to use my greater invisibility spell to turn myself invisible. Okay. Because uh, also, if I read this correctly, does it let? Does that mean my attacks later on will roll at advantage, or just no? Uh, they will roll at advantage, and because it's greater invisibility, it will not bring you out of invisibility. That's dope. That's dope. Okay. And then for my bonus action, I'm going to do um, oops, uh, Mantle of Inspiration. Sure. So eight hit points to my four. Well, Torn doesn't need it. Can I give myself? Yeah. Some, like one, yeah. So I'll give it to the four of us that are wounded, and then if anyone wants to move, they can move. Would anyone like to move? You can move your characters now if you'd like on the map, or I can do it for you. Just let me know. How far? Up to 30 feet. Uh, not you, Torn, though. You didn't get the mantle. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, trying to get in cover or just destroy this thing? Is that where you wanted to be, Celeste? Um Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Did you see my little mm -hmm. thing on the screen? Uh, E one is the Reef Ripper Guardian, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's the main one we have to kill. Yeah. I like that as you drag it, it tells you how many feet you're moving to, which yeah, is very handy. nice. That's super nice. Okay. Yeah, I'm invisible, so I'm just gonna fucking hide back here. <laughs> okay. Cool. Cool. Okay. We've been waiting for you to go invisible this whole campaign, and you just started. <laughs> you know, level, <laughs> level level eight or nine. Gosh, whatever it is now. And dude. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> um. So cool. who's anybody else moving? Or are you guys good? Um. Can I move? I'm trying to move my guy, but it's just moving my my map around. That's right. Where do you want to go? Phone. Um, I want to go, like, a little bit closer to where, like, Vendry is, like, that opening of that KBI right there. Okay. That's good. All right. Uh, Seducius, that'll end your turn. Bring us to Sless. All right. I'm at the hair with her own, with a lightning bolt right back. Okay. Um, and I'm going to do, um, I think my angle, I can, it'll hit both. Mm -hmm. the like t1 and her yeah um just to help you a bit here if you head straight down you can actually you you can pretty much aim it at hit t1 t2 and her oh okay okay well let's do that okay uh and then it's uh is it dex Oop, that's not the right thing uh yeah 14 Dex 14. Uh, the animals succeed. She super fails. Okay, roll to two. Go ahead and roll damage. There's one one in there if you want to re-roll that. That's not a fire attack though, right? Oh, yeah. My fault. I thought that was all of them. Fair point. Uh, all right. So she's going to take 35... As she kind of like, and you see her, she's in pain, but she's also just like laughing maniacally as she sees like the power of, of lightning head towards her. Um, she's either a masochist, just super into lightning. 
the animals, though, uh, fare a little bit better. They're still up. Um, although, you know, some damage in there is always tough. Um, but they are still standing. Uh, anything else in your turn, Sus? No, thank you. That'll bring us back to one of um, the wolves. Uh, this one... Where does he want to go? Yeah, fuck that. He is mad at Sless, so he's going to charge at Sless. <laughs> and Sless, uh, this one is going to rear back, seeing that he's got a couple of different people in his uh, attack path. You see him kind of like <sighs> take a deep breath and just <sighs> exhale this like uh, freezing icy blast uh, of air actually at you and Torin. Um, I need you both to make dexterity saving throws, please. Oh, is, no. he Is who frozen? He was frozen on my screen. Oh. Uh, what did we get? Um, <coughs> Sus and Torin, you both, you both do succeed, so you're only going to take half damage, um, which means you will take 10 points of damage apiece. Whew. Good thing, because full damage was all I had left. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, that'll end its turn. And bring us to Torn. Yes. Uh, the E1 is the strongest. Oh, we don't know that yet. Uh, e E1 is the main one. Right, okay. Um, I'm going to do... Let's see how far can I freaking walk here? It's like 40 feet. Okay, I'm gonna move my dude. I think here, hold on, let me do, do the math here. Oh yeah, I can, I don't even need to go that far. I might just move like here-ish. Okay. Right, I'm gonna shoot. Um, I'm gonna just full send my fireball necklace, dude. Eight, eighth level, all the way across to E1. Uh, okay. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna say you uh, put it behind her so it doesn't go through the wall and hit any of your colleagues there. Yeah, yeah, like out there somewhere. Just trying to get a sense of how big that is. Um, do you have the eighth level one left? I thought you used that on um, the dragon. What do you have left on that? How many charges? Uh, well, I mean, unless I did something wrong, it shows fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. But maybe I. So you've got, I you've only got three charges left on it. Um, okay, I'll use. I probably use the eighth then. I, I can't remember. Yeah, I, th I, th I don't know if you use the eighth one. But you definitely use like a, a, a big one. Um, let me see what you've got. I don't know how to mark those off. How do you like delete those? Uh, you just uncheck them. There are multiple bleeds or even the whole necklace is one action when you do increase the level of fireball for one each beat. So you used, one, two, you basically used a sixth level or a fifth level. So you can either cast one third level, um, or you can um, you can do like a, actually sorry hold on one second. Uh, you can do you can do a seventh level if you use the rest of the beads. It's like a cluster then. It's not like one. Basically, okay, like I... one bead is a third level spell, but if you pull off a bunch at once, you can increase. Um, the level of spell by each um, one that you, you pull off. So that other one, you were right, you did do 8th level. You just pulled off 5 and added it together because the base level is 3rd. Uh, I see. Okay, I didn't realize how it works. So if I do a 7th, I'll be done with the beads, basically. Correct. Okay, let's just do it. All right. He is in, in full danger right now. Or, but... uh, so we're doing a 7th level fireball spell. Uh, DC 15. She does succeed, but she's going to take half damage. Uh, so, let's see what we've got here for Fireball. So, now why won't let me open the spell? There we go. 
Uh, let's see, 86 at third level, so 1d6, so add 4d6 to that. So that's 12d6 if you want to roll damage or if you want me to. Oh, you did already. Never mind. Awesome. Yeah, 30 something. Uh, yeah, 37. I, 7, yeah, I accidentally cleared it and then Minus I was half. It. Um, she takes this huge eruption poof, as it blows out. And for a second, you think you've got her down and she screams in agony. Uh, but as the fireball and the heat kind of dissipate and the, and the, and the brightness kind of, uh, goes away from your eyes, you do see that she is still, um, uh, alive, um, badly wounded parts of her body are just black and charred, but she is not dead yet. Uh, flux that brings us back to you. Okay. Um, so I know that, Zendra, you have Namiel queued up. So I think I'm going to cast Bane on all three of the, the creatures around us. Okay. So E1, T1, and T2. Um, and then that gives you guys all some advantage to when you guys attack the next couple of people. Because everyone else up next is about to attack. So Bane for all of you on those goals. Okay. What's the DC again? Um, the DC on Bane is actually a Charisma 14. Uh, they all fail. Okay. So they all have it on. Mm -hmm. And um, you guys are welcome to attack them. Um, I think actually, too, for my bonus action, I'm going to throw out Valve Enmity on the, on the T2 that was trying to attack Sless. Um, so. All right. Uh, that'll bring us back to the evoker who. Uh, okay, so the evoker, uh, Gadriel, kind of looks around desperate now. She says, fine, they'll kill you and I'll just wait. Uh, she kind of starts moving her hands together and you start to see this like um, form of ice, like this kind of ice cube start to get bigger and bigger in her hand. She kind of puts her hands towards the ground and this wall of ice shoots up. Um, she doesn't know that Seduceus is there, but Seduceus, you are there. I need you to make a dexterity saving throw for me. She's sealing herself in there, but you're in this space. Uh, you do succeed. Uh, I just want to see if you take some damage or any damage on that. Uh, ice. Um, so it does, it does manage to get a piece of you, but it's not going to do very much damage. You take... What is it, seven points of damage? Let me just double check. Um, oh, half as much. So actually a little more than that. Sorry, my fault. Uh, yeah, you take 15 points of damage as this ice wall hits you. Um, as a sudden like... Almost like the Great Wall of the North from Game of Thrones just seals off this space. Uh, and you guys are trapped in this room with these two... Um, uh, uh, the cold dogs. Uh, you're still invisible. Uh, but um, this wall of ice is now separating you from um, from Gadriel. Uh, uh, Seduceus, as you are close to this wall, you can feel it is it is like permeating frost. Just being close to it uh, seems painful. Touching it, interacting with it could cause some harm. Uh, but that'll end her turn and bring us back to Zendri. I'm going to go for what's right in front of me and use my crossbow on T2. Okay. Roll to hit. Rawr. Six. Uh, that misses. Uh, anything up? I'll still up. Do I still have my spiritual weapon queued up? Uh, it is. It's just behind the wall. Can I hit it? You can try to hit the wall. Sure. Or you can hit one of the dogs up to you. 
Do I? Do y'all want me to try and hit it? I think that's a Zendry question, not a other people question. That's very true. Hmm. Well, I want to try and do? hit it. All right. Uh, roll to hit. I'm gonna hit that shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's the next that's the next t-shirt is wwzd what would zendry do <laughs> i think it's xd uh, uh, i'm tired leave me alone <laughs> wait how'd you get 11 and i got 22 oh no i thought you said 11 my fault so a 22 definitely hits um go ahead and roll damage uh, yeah six uh, so you, and you do see a piece of the ice wall kind of chip off. You're not through it yet, but you do think that it's possible um, to get through it uh, eventually. Cool. Anything else on your turn? Mm. You want to move anywhere? Else can I, do? I think you no. said movements if you'd like. No, you want to stay there? Okay. Um, that'll yeah, bring good. us to this other um, kind of cold dog who is going to charge at um, Sless. Uh, and he's just going to take a couple bites out of you if he can. Great. Uh, let's see if he can snap at you. He does hit you, Celeste. You're going to take seven points of uh, piercing damage. And as mm. he clamps down on you, uh, you actually can kind of feel that coldness in his breath uh, once again kind of sit to permeate as well. You take another seven points of cold damage. So in total, 14 points. Oh, that's me. I'm done. Shoot. All right. Celeste is unconscious. Sweet. <laughs> Torn, let's let's loot, loot the body while he's unconscious, dude. Uh, that's going to bring us to... Damn. <laughs> that's going to bring us to Seducius. Um, Seducius, uh, you are still invisible, just near this ice wall that kind of pushed you back a bit. Yeah, so to be clear, I'm on the other side of the ice wall, and she's on the other side. Uh, correct. She kind of put it up as this protective barrier as she's yeah. um, probably in like mortally wounded area and just waiting for the dogs to try to finish you off, which so far seems to be a good strategy. <laughs> How high is this ice wall? Uh, it's it's floor to ceiling. It's covering it. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a fire yeah. stone and burn that maybe? Let's go. Uh, let's go. Rock road. Uh, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know if I should waste a spell on that. Uh, actually, point of point of clarity, I was wrong. Uh, there's maybe about three or four feet um, gap between the roof of the cavern and the top of the ice wall. The ice wall is about ten feet tall. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm gonna try and help Sless. Um, no one can see me anyway, so <clears throat> I'm going to. Sless, quick question though: Was that? Was that? Uh, blow enough to get rid of the eight points that that Seducius already gave you? Oh, yeah. I gave you eight points. Oh, I don't think I ever added that in there. Um, okay, so you should be I think like at least at four or five if I did the math right. Hold on. Not that I don't want to kill you. Just I, I, I don't remember if you added those. I don't see them added. Uh, I should be at four, but how do I? Oh wait, hang on. Yeah. Okay. So, so I is, click on. So, so is well, it's on like the, it's on the failure success thing. Um, just you should be uh, able to add yourself some some life. If not, like I can temporary do it. HP. Okay. Um, yeah. Just to get you back up. Uh, let's see. Uh, no, I didn't do anything. Let me check. I can I can do it from my end. Let me do it. Okay. Uh, health points. You are at. Uh, you should actually be a four, zero temporary HP. Okay, you should be back up now if you refresh. Uh, Seducius. Okay, you said you wanted to help Sless, or do you want to do something else now? Uh, I. I'm deciding to stay where I am. Okay. Uh, since Celeste is not dead, I'm going to change what I'm going to do. So, um, I'm going to try. Uh, so, I'm going to try and cast. Well, 
Yeah, I'm going to cast Bane. Try and cast Bane on the two creatures, because if I do it at a level three, I can target more than one creature. Uh, just a heads up, they already baned by Flux. Well, yeah. snap. Double Bane oh, from the darkness. <laughs> I was born in the darkness. Hey, I was born in the since, um, since I didn't get knocked out, can I do Hellish Rebuke? Which I would have done, but I... Uh, yes, yeah, not... you can. It does fail at saving throw as well. Okay, let me let me do that then real quick. Ty. Yeah, that bane sucks every time I have to remember to roll in minus four, I think, off of it. All right, so, ten, ten damage. Uh, ten points of damage. Uh, I also, let me just double check. Yeah, ten points of damage. Nice. All right. Um, starting to kind of work your way through them. Um, you know, my oops, what was wrong? Um, still standing, but this one seems to be bloodied a bit now. Uh, okay. Well, then, shoot, I'm just going to do Dissonant Whispers on T1, then. Alrighty. Uh... Also, no. Does it... So, wait, T2 still has Val of Enmity, right? Uh, yes, correct. Goes for a minute, so... Yeah, it's still, it's still it. Um, that one does fail because of Bane. Thanks, Bane. Um, if you want to go ahead and roll uh, your damage... Uh, and he will run away. 12 points, nice. All right, so he takes 12 points of damage. Um, he's still standing, uh, but Dissonant Whispers kind of bleeds into his mind, and even in his uh, scary state, feeling a little cut off from its master, it does start to try and run away, uh, although it's having a hard time swimming, so it gets right into the pool of water and stops there. Uh, Seducius, is that uh, the end of your turn, or you want to do anything else? No, that is, that is it for now. Um, and then just to double-check... Um, Dissonant Whispers isn't a concentration, right? It doesn't have a little C next to its name, like a diamond. I don't think so. No. no. Okay, perfect. Uh, just remember that your greater invisibility is a concentration spell, so you have to like hold it to stay invisible. If you cast okay. another concentration spell or take enough damage, you might lose it. Um, okay. Which, actually, I didn't make you roll that, so I should. Um, can you roll a constitution saving throw for me? You actually lose your invisibility. <laughs> so I'm gonna. Uh, yeah, that's. Oh, no. Well, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna use one of my lucky slots and okay. roll another d20 and see. Yeah, there we go. Using that feat. Oh. Yeah. Which. Yeah. Okay, you're still invisible. Easy peasy. Good, good use of that feat to uh, keep yourself there. Uh, Celeste, it's back to you, though. It's your turn uh, as you're terribly uh, <laughs> being attacked by this creature. You're muted, dude. <laughs> um, if I drink my potion of invulnerability, is that my entire turn? Or can uh, I do something? I, I usually mm -hmm. run it, it, if you... Um, are up and it's your and you're you're drinking it yourself. I'll let you have a, a bonus action as you're drinking a potion. So you'll still get an action and movement. Okay. All right. Well, I'm gonna drink that. Okay. Uh, which lasts for one minute. Mm -hmm. Um, and then uh, I am gonna hit uh, T two. Uh. I'm gonna hit T2 with a uh, with a little fireball. A fireball? Yes. Okay. All right. You you sound surprised. I I I shouldn't be, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you burn yourself, Doug. Uh, I'd like Tori and, and Sless <laughs> and Zendry and Flux. Oh, and... okay. Hang on. Wait. That's twenty feet. Yes. This is a really <laughs> small area. These are not five feet block. They're like one foot block. Well, okay, that then that okay, that's different then. I didn't realize we were like shoulder to shoulder in this. Even if you okay. weren't weren't shoulder uh, to shoulder, he's right next to you. What were you thinking a fireball would do? You can do a fire bolt, which is single killing? target. And and again, I think you have twin twinning, so you can send it at both of them. Well, the other one is drowning in the water, right? Do I even have to attack that thing? 
Yeah, I think water and lightning. Hold mm-hmm. on, let me see what you've got. Maybe I can make a recommendation. Um, spells. You just do the fireball. Dude. You're committed. Yeah, fuck it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not in the, in the waste of time. I oh, am, yeah, but I'm ready. So my my recommendation would be you either cast Scorching Ray and pick your target, um, or if you don't want to use a spell, um, you can do Firebolt. I think you've got Twinning Mana Magic available. Let me double check what you've got. Yeah, you've got Twin Spell. So you can cast Firebolt... And basically have it target T1 and T2. Um, and then any bonus actions you have available still? Let me just check. Well, this is my bonus action, right? Uh, oh, sorry. You already did your bonus okay. action because you took your, your potion. So, yeah, yeah, this would be your action. Um, so, basically, you can use Firebolt and attack T1 and T2. Or you can use Scorching Ray, and then you can choose three targets. Uh, I'll do, I'll do Firebolt. Okay. Uh, so roll to hit. All right. The first one's going to hit. Roll a hit again. See if you hit the other one too. Oh, I have to do them separately. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I missed that one. That one misses. But, uh, yeah, if you want to, um, roll for T1, you'll see if you hit him. Nice. Uh, as T1 is trying to run away, you just hit him in the back with a flame. Uh, can't quite get quite at T2 as he's kind of in you, still trying to chop it around. Uh, but you do kill the fleeing one. Uh, and that will end your turn and bring us back to the other one who is on top of you. Um, he is going to try and bite you again. Uh, he will miss. And go for it. Uh, remember, Can't though, anyway. I think you... Th- you're thinking potion of invulnerability to something it doesn't. It gives you resistance to damage. It doesn't make you immune to damage. So you just take half damage. You're at four. Oh, that's dumb. It's, it's what's dumb <laughs> is that you don't read what's in the notes. <laughs> it says you have resistance to all damage. Yeah, resistance. Resistance, all damage. resistance means yeah. you you take half damage. Yeah, like I resist all damage. No, resistance is mean. different than immune to damage. <laughs> Uh, Torin, though, it's your turn. <laughs> oh my gosh. Waterproof and water resistant. Water resistant. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Oh, that's the best analogy we've had all night. Oh my, oh my gosh. Right there, lady. Right there. All right, I have a mechanics question if I try to yes, pull, pull something off here. Um, so, like, let's say I. I do a spell and then I shape shift. Can I move after my shape shift? I don't remember. Like, can I move yeah. its distance? Okay. All right. I don't know if this would work technically, but I'm going to try this. I'm going to... Uh, uh, shit, where'd it go? Um, oh, do you pass without a trace? What are you on trying myself? to do? What's your what's Basically, your game? like, pass without a trace on myself, switch to a crow and then fly over the hole so I'm like next to them so they don't know I'm over there. So over pass the without a trace out. doesn't make you invisible. It just makes it hard for people to detect you like a stealth roll. Even sneaking, that'd be it pretty tough. I'll, I'll let you try it but I'm just going to say the the DC for that would be pretty high. Might as well just go over anyway no matter what basically. <laughs> kind of up to you how you want to it, do it. If I'm, if I'm going to go that yeah. far. It's a, it's a it's a good strategy. Um, it just I, I want to make sure you know it's not going to make you invisible. It's just going to make you harder to like perceive. Um, it, it basically helps you sneak. It doesn't make you like unseeable. Okay. Well, let's try it. Why not? Okay. Uh, you guys handled on this side of the ice wall. I'm going to go to the other and try to finish her off. Basically, is my, my game plan. So, um, roll a stealth check for me as the crow. Kaka! No, it's a tiny bird and no. it, like all blacks. So I thought it would like blend in, you know. I don't know. I'm just trying to go. Yeah, a bird in a cave. What what could go wrong? <laughs> That's nothing. It's tiny. It can fly fifty feet. That's all right, true. you need. Well, what, what throw do you fast, need? Fast. Uh, stealth check. Stealth check. Stealth. It has no extra stealth. I don't think. Okay, I'm just gonna go normal. 
still play. As we get closer to the end, like every game we played, Nate, you just he was like, oh. <laughs> So uh, I was gonna let Jeremy like, cast that fireball. It's been, it's been like a year, guys. I was playing. very what close to just letting Jeremy cast that fireball and literally killed a lot of you. Uh, I know, I know. Because we've had this discussion a few <laughs> times now. That's why I'm getting over the wall, dude. Yeah. All right. So you you do manage to fly over the wall, um, Gadriel. As you're flying over, uh, is actually. Uh, praying at a statue of Talos. You kind of see her kneeling. Um, mm-hmm. She doesn't seem to notice your presence there. Okay. Um, <laughs> I can't do anything else anyway, so I'm just going to like chill, I guess. Sure. We'll say you're just kind of like hovering quietly yeah, on hovering her. In the, hovering in there because I can't attack her any, Yeah, anyway, I just so. need to check one quick thing on that wall of ice. Um, Can I have you make a constitution saving throw as you're flying over it? Okay. You feel this sudden rush of cold, this frigid blast. Uh, she was right back. Let's see, con is uh, eight minus one. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if I roll my normal, I just minus so, one for that? Yeah, roll a d20 and subtract one. has a bonus oh great big numbers <laughs> yeah uh so as you fly through you do make it over through but as soon as you kind of pass through the wall just the frigid air around it kind of like ugh, freezes the bones of like your little bird uh and you like you tumble and turn back into torn because what your crow has like five health points uh, two <laughs> maybe it has <laughs> Raven has twelve health yeah. points. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, no, no one, no one health point. Yeah, you're right. Okay. You're yeah, right. for sure. One, so one you like tumble point. and turn into it, uh, Torin. You're also gonna take five. Been a bigger bird. I don't know how big this gap was. I guess. Hold on one second. I just need to do some math in my brain. Um, what was it? I should have like a. Six. A regular eagle. Um, so you take, as Torin, you take 14 points of damage as you tumble back onto the ground. Um, she definitely now knows that you're there, though, as you are forced out of your crow shape. Uh, but you are past the wall. Um, and that will end your turn uh, and bring us to Flux. <laughs> no! <laughs> hey, y'all, I need your help over here. Okay. Fire goes. I know! Um, so since T2 still has Bane and Valve and Midi, I'm just going to try to stab that fool. Yeah, do it. Um, um remember you get advantage. Uh, so oh, right click yeah. to roll with advantage. I remember. Uh, and if you're going to attack twice, you can do it twice now too. 23. Mm-hmm. If you want to attack again, uh, before you roll damage, we'll see if that second one hits I as attack well. again. I attack again. Cool, nice. They both hit. Um, are you doing smites or anything? You can add smites to one of them if you want. Um, no, I'm just. Okay. Uh, what, what did you say? I, I just I Wait, wanted on, to know if you, you I wanted to know if you were adding smite to it. Okay. No, I think I'm gonna. Cool. Okay, go ahead and roll damage. You can do it just... twice. Tight. Okay. Four. And then... 15. All right. 15 points damage. Oh, sorry. 11. Um, a couple of big hits on it. He's still kind of standing. He doesn't seem too phased, and he's really focused on... Um, really focused on Sless. Uh, but that'll bring us to the Evoker. Uh, Gadriel kind of turns around, and she's still crackling with energy as she sees. She goes, <laughs> All alone? Little one? Are you sure you don't want to worship Talos now? Uh, and she just launches out at you with... What would she do? Yeah, I think she is going to try and do that. Um, yeah, she is going to try and do that. Uh, can I have you roll a uh, dexterity saving throw for me, Torin, as she sends more lightning your way? 
not quite as big as the first one. You see her powers are a bit yeah. diminished. But, uh, Maybe she'll knock down that ice wall. Uh, you do fail. Um, and you're going to take... As soon as I find it. Uh, you're going to take 26 points of lightning damage, which oh. I believe you are resistant to. Correct me on that. Oh. Actually, I don't know about that one. Um, if uh, you go to your features and traits, I think because you're a blue dragon, you are resistant yeah. to it. So 13 points of damage. Resistance damage type associated with draconic accessory ancestry. Lightning damage. You're right. Oh my gosh, I forgot about that. Um, nice. So you're only going to take about 13 points of damage. She almost seems kind of impressed as she sees this. Um, the the spell is about to like crash into the wall. Uh, and just at the last moment, she kind of flicks her hand uh, and it just kind of turns away from it and avoids damaging this barrier that she set up in place. Uh, but that'll end her turn. Um, I think, let me just double check. She doesn't have any bonus actions she can do in this moment. She does not. Uh, so that'll then bring us to Zendry. I'm going to go ahead and hit T2 with, uh, Toll the Dead. Okay. Toll the Dead. Uh, where are you, Toll the Dead? Wiz 14. Wiz 14, perfect. Uh, he fails, uh, so you can roll a d tw uh, d12 on that. I think it's um, two d12 plus three. Ooh. Is it two d12 plus three? No, eight? because he's already got damage. You can actually increase it from d8s to d12s. Um, so easiest way to do that on your character sheet, the bottom left, you'll see the little dice icon. Um, mm -hmm. Just uh, hit the d12, which is the second from the top, twice, and then we'll just add three to it. What do we get? So nine, 12 points, oh. nice. Uh, as he starts to really now start to look pretty weakened as well. Anything with your bonus action? Yeah, I want to hit him with my meow meow. All right, you're going after the wolf with him. Go ahead and swing. Nine. Uh, nine misses, not quite enough to get to him. Uh, so that'll end Zendry's turn and bring us back to Seducius, who is still invisible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I'm just going to go for Dissonant Whispers again on T2. Okay. Uh, he fails. Um, so go ahead and roll damage. He's also going to try and run away as far as he can go. Uh, 19. Actually, he can't make it. Uh, you have murdered this one as well. Uh, anything else on your turn? Mm. Mm. <clears throat> no. No. Like right. the serenade or something? <laughs> That'll bring us to Sless. All right, just in time for me to knock down this wall. Um, let's see how I want to do this. I should have moved. Kill the see, I had to kill the God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do a fireball. Um, He's saying he should have moved, so you did it. Um, I will say, I Celeste, yeah. if you do want to do a fireball, you can you can get one in that room. Um, oh! It just means Torin's <laughs> going to be in the, the crossfire, but that's up to you. But you can get it there. And fried bird tonight, dude. Not a bird anymore. Yeah, the one time, yeah, I'm a doll. I'm a doll. It was the one time when he dropped me off at building. So. <laughs> uh, I've waited the whole campaign for this moment. <laughs> Dude, yeah, I'm gonna throw a fireball in there. If, 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 if I can see <laughs> in that room, let's do it. Spider baby. <laughs> yeah, I can handle this. Yeah, I'm good, bro. You don't need to get in here. <laughs> no, I don't think you can. All right, let's do it. <laughs> All right, what are you doing? Oh my gosh! I'm oh. throwing a fireball in there. All right. Um, so you're throwing a fireball. Um, <laughs> what level? You're going to kill me? You're going to kill me for real? Oh, I'm level four for sure. I'm just, right. we're going all in. Damn. Uh, all right. Um, what Can is I it? Dex right 14? Yeah. Oh, she fails. Can I have you do the same thing for me as well, Torn? Dex save for me? <laughs> uh, 
Yes, big numbers, come on. You failed to. Go ahead and roll damage. I can't wild shape now or do anything because it's not my turn. Correct. Oh my god. All right, 36 points of damage. Sless, how do you want to kill Gadriel? And Torin. And Torin. Yeah, but you're going to be knocked out. We can bring you right back. We'll see. <laughs> we'll oh see. Oh my god. Um, Are you dead, dude? High risk, high reward. High risk, high reward. Not revive, dude. I, <laughs> I, would, I would imagine that she um, was like about to do some kind of lightning attack. And like all of a sudden, like as she's got like a little bit of lightning coming out of her fingertips, she just starts melting and just melts to the ground. Nice, yeah. So it kind of goes. She wasn't expecting it because she figured this wall was this barrier, and all of a sudden she just kind of like yeah. she's starting to crackle some energy. And just, there will always be more of us than you, <laughs> you fools. And then all of a sudden she just looks up and just like can't even like react to it as this huge explosion just kind of goes down and she just eviscerates and melts uh, as all of it's there. And all that's left is like the little crackle of energy that's there just for a moment. Uh, Torin also doesn't have a moment to react and he's kind of flung backwards uh, in flame towards this ice wall and he kind of hits both and cracks down. Um, Torin is unconscious. I need you to make a death saving throw for me. The ice wall was 37 how much was it for each space it's resistant to fire the ice wall actually did get destroyed from the fireball that was enough to to clear a path um so there is room there to get to torin um but i need torin to roll a death saving throw for me first death saving throw i've never had to do that uh, before just Shoot. do just roll a d20 oh to beat welcome 10. to the club my friend <laughs> d20 plus what uh <laughs> not, not plus anything just a straight d20 oh good my rolls have stuck so let's go that's, let's add to it. Okay, uh, you have oh one God. failed death save. Um, <laughs> if you get three fails, you are dead, dead. Although I don't suppose that's going to be a huge issue at this point um, because uh, you know your friends all around. Although, yeah, friends around me. Hmm. Um, the rest of you do hear um, heavy <laughs> footsteps start to come from lower on in the chamber as well. Uh, in fact, oh, good. Well, let's hurry up here. Two other uh, figures uh, come from the bottom, and one goes, "Hey, what's going on here? What?" As they look at all of you, um, so you've got two new people in front of you. Um, they seem to be a part of this cult, um, although they're not attacking you outright. Um, and then you've got Torin uh, behind this evoker wall uh, that is um, da dying. Hmm. So they're coming from where like T one is. The they're direction? coming from um, kind of like that pathway that Zendri's on, that empty area. That's kind of where they're running in. Oh. They're running in towards me. Mm-hmm. Then you should run towards uh, Torin and try and heal him up. Yeah, yeah. Can I have lay on hands too. Yeah. Yeah, both of you. Yeah. Yeah, I'll give you um like each like a, a moment to try and do something before these folks interact more. Um okay. would spare the dying come in like would that what's what is undead? I just need to get past this already. I get confused by undead. Uh it's so, alive. Uh, undead is like a specific type of monster, so like zombies, skeletons, ghosts. Um what are you trying to do? What's the the goal? Get him yeah, at least to where he's like not dead. Sure. Dead, so dead. Spare, spare the dying would come in handy if you can't um, like if you if you don't have the capacity to heal him right now. Basically, you would cast spare the dying on him, and he wouldn't have to make those death saving throws. So he'd still be unconscious, but he wouldn't be actively dying. <laughs> he's in a coma. Well, I have Basically. I have um, lay on hands pool, which doesn't require you to use a spell. So maybe that might help a little. I mean, of course it'll help a little, right? You don't really know. Can I use uh, my third level healing word on him? Where did my screen go? Uh, yeah. Uh, you'd have to move up a little bit, but yeah, I'd allow that. How much life does he get back? Oh. 
<laughs> eleven. All right, eleven. Uh, Torin is no longer dying, and he does have some. He's got a little bit of health on him. I want to give 11. him some health points with lay on hands pull. Okay. Can I have some of those I too? I have all. Yeah, all four. Give me this less I'm, I'm yeah, only gonna yeah, allow like <laughs> one kind of moment, so she won't be able to do both. So you can either choose Torin or Sless. No. I'm gonna go to Torin, uh, and I'm gonna give Torin um, uh, twenty. Uh, okay, Torin mm -hmm. gets 20 more health points. What about the Zendry stuff? What is that? Uh, so total, Worth. you should be at 31 health. Because she mm -hmm. gave you um, 11. 11. And um, then you got another 20. Oh, must be nice. I'm back. I'm back, baby. <laughs> See? Rejuvenated, ready to rock. It's worth it. Yeah, but I have it under control. That's what was <laughs> killing me. <laughs> As a little bird? <laughs> I can oh shape one more time. I was about to turn oh into like a snake God. or like a rhino or something. You wouldn't know. <laughs> a rhino? What did you see a rhino, dude? Like, really? <sighs> it been, broke through bad glass as a rhino. <laughs> uh, nice. So, uh, like, last set of things before these folks likely attack you. Um, I'm at... 15 minutes on my. Uh, why is my. I'm going to use some of my lay on hands pool for my oh, self, it... I think. Yeah, and I actually have a potion of healing. I didn't realize I had. Uh, I will allow you to drink a quick potion if you'd like. Um, Perfect. As you guys are doing that, these guys um, are starting to kind of walk up, Four. and you, you hear from behind them Fools, don't wait. This is your opportunity now. Strike them down before they move. Um, so they are they are going to start attacking next as you see one more combatant um, also kind of decked out in on leather armors uh, he's got like this huge scimitar and he also has like the um, trappings of Talos on him um, tight perfect my map's not working why why All right, guys. All right, back in business. So that's going to bring us to um, who was it in the order? Uh, you're gone. That's going to bring us first to one of these kind of first combatants who charges up. He's going to go after Flux, kind of in this narrow hallway. You see that it's a bit of a bottleneck that you guys have created. Uh, and he's just going to try and take a couple swings at you with his mace, Flux. A um, little bit of an underling, not super strong, but he does hit you once. You take five points of damage uh, from this mace as it hits you. All right, that'll end his turn and then bring us back to Seducius. Seducius, you are still invisible. Just a heads up. <laughs> How often do I have to like roll something to keep, keep staying invisible? Um, it, it really depends. So um, because it's concentration, as long as you don't cast another concentration type spell, you can stay invisible. Uh, but when you have to roll as if you take damage, you have to basically roll higher than that damage was done to you or half of that damage that was done to you to kind of maintain concentration through that attack. Got it. Okay. Okay. That's why you had to roll when that ice wall came at you. Yeah. Then I'm going to try... Um, okay, one twenty feet. Would a hundred okay, my crown of madness is hundred and twenty feet. Would that would that hit H two? Can I even see H two or can I only do yeah. H one? You you can technically see all of them if you move over. This way you'll have clear line on all three of them. The leader seems to be yeah. the one kind of furthest in the back. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna try it on H two to see if I can enchant him with Crown of Madness. Sure. Uh what's the DC? Uh, wisdom 15. Uh, he does fail. <laughs> Dope. 
All right, so he is considered charmed and mad and now kind of looks around uh, just attacking anybody nearby. Uh, anything else on your turn, though, Said? No, that's it for now. All right. Uh, Celeste, that brings us back to you. What's your life at now after the health potion? Uh, 22, because it was 44 plus 4. Nice. Uh, so what is that? So I rolled a 14 plus 4. Nice. So um, 18. What would you like to do on your turn? Um, so I was trying to figure out because it's pretty cramped over there, huh? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, you could move ish over here and try to get an angle on some of them if you want to risk being in the pool and taking some damage there. Um, as you saw to that war horse from before, you could try that, you get a better angle, but it just kind of depends on what you want to do. Got it. Um, does lightning bolt, can I squeeze that in there, or is that going to be too close for Fluxen's injury? Um, I would say if you want to get up close and personal, you could then send that lightning bolt straight down. I don't think you'd be able to hit all three, but you could do H1 and D1. Oh, well, I don't want to do that. Um, okay, I am going to do a... Where to go? Uh, I'll do a... Erupting Earth, okay, which is a twenty foot radius, but so I can probably, probably put most of that in. Or it's a twenty foot uh, cube. So I can probably, probably put most of that in that room, right? Oh yeah. To where I just hit them. Yeah, for sure. That's a little big, but ish about here. So you could aim. You could get all of them with that. Yeah, right there. Okay. Yep. I'm gonna do that. Uh, the dex fourteen. Uh, the, th the first two H1 and H2 succeed, um, as does the, uh, main guy in the back kind of seems to be a dark skinned elf, uh, but they all succeed. So I think they take half damage. Uh, yes. So I'll do that. So eight then. Nice. Eight points of damage. Um, all of them still kind of standing pretty tough. Um, these guys seem to be a little bit burlier, at least, than the others. Um, that'll end your turn, Celeste, and bring us to Torin. All right. Um, I'm going to go... I guess I should move myself a little bit here. There. And then I'm going to... I'll drop um see what spell slot do I have one two I'm just to a level two moonbeam on top of H one. Okay. Uh, uh, succeed his um saving throw, but if you want to do half oh. damage. So he'll take two, four points of damage. Would be two. That was a. Okay. Um, not too bad on this guy. He's still feeling pretty good. Uh, but anything else on your turn? Uh, no, I'm good. Alrighty, that brings us back to H two, who is just at this point going crazy. He's just going to attack. Uh, the main dude, who you hear at this point, kind of say, "What are you? What are you doing?" I can move him. There we go. Uh, nice. First attack hits. Second attack also hits. So he's going to hit him with both his mace, um, and he will take any resistances. Nope. Uh, so he will take, I think, ten points of damage. Yeah, ten points of damage um, to the main guy in the back. All righty. Uh, Flux, back to you. All right. I'm going to cast Searing Smite. And I'm going to attack H1 with nice. my, um, my longsword, baby. All right. Go ahead and roll to hit. All right. 13. 13 does hit. So you can go ahead and roll uh, your damage and then also add your Searing Smite damage, too. Okay, and I'm going to do my double attack on this, too. Yeah, go for it. 
because I can't. Okay, so I'm gonna do another roll. Um, and I got also 16. Hits. Yep, great. Okay, and then two of these. Eight and, or sorry, 11 and. And then do you four, want to add your then, uh, spike damage? So, yeah, my standard spike damage is six. Nice. Alrighty. Uh, so uh, you I mean, just... I can... Do I do one more because of the uh, double hit? Smite only hits once. Um, but uh, it's enough to, to end okay, and no, fell this okay. guy uh, as you just kind of like chop right through him and your uh, burning smite kind of bleeds into this dude and fire just erupts from his body. Uh, that particular thug dies, uh, leaving the pathway open to the other ones below. Uh, do you want to move anywhere or are you feeling good where you are? Uh, no, I'm going to back up a little bit because I'm still kind of hurt. So I'm going to move like right here. Nice. All right, that'll bring us back um, to this main one. Uh, seeing this person in front of him not really being able to get past him at this point, uh, you hear him just say, idiot fool. Uh, and he just attacks um, the person in front of him instead. Uh, so what are you going to do? Hmm. Yeah, I think he's just going to take a couple shots at him with his sword. Uh, first one hits, second one uh, misses, but he'll still do some damage, and he poisons him. Uh, so that's seven. Seven damage. And you do notice as this person cuts into him, uh, it seems to leave like a trail of black through the wounds that he has on him. Uh, so that'll end his turn. Uh, and bring us uh, back. You're dead. Go away. To Zendry. Hold on. I'm having map issues. No worries. Refresh it. Sometimes that helps. It just turns green. Oh, that's weird. Even when you refresh? Yeah. Yeah. Who's in front of me? Like, um, who... Your really only two targets now are um, the like bodyguard that Seducius has charmed into like attacking his own, uh, and then the main seems like captain or admiral in this cultist group um, who's attacking. He's like defending himself against this thug. So you've got two people pretty close in front of you, maybe about twenty feet off that you have as targets. One of them is under a spell. One of them is under a spell um, from Seducius. He's kind of attacking his own people. As long as Seducius long can hold one? it. Uh, actually, that's a good point. Seducius, um, Crown of Madness is a concentration spell. So you are no longer invisible. Just a heads up. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Um, okay, it's fine. But uh, yeah, one is under a spell who's attacking his own. Uh, the other one's not under a spell, but is trying to defend himself and is trying to attack him back to get him off. Mm. Can I hit the other one that's not under the spell? Am I yeah. nearby it enough? What do you want to do? Um, Sacred Flame. Sure. Let's see if that works. Uh, it Dex does. He 14. does fail. Yep. If you want to go ahead and roll damage on that. So good. 15. Nice. Big hit. Um, yeah, he's starting to get a little bloody on that. Uh, that'll bring us back to Seducius. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to see something real quick. Oh, perfect. So D1 should be within a 60 foot range, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Uh, I will do my trusty dissonant whispers to old D1 then. Uh, alrighty. Uh, 15. He does succeed. So no damage on that one. Anything else you want to do? Um, but, 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 no. Okay. Uh, Celeste, that brings us to you. All right. 
Alright. Um, I am gonna try and do... Uh, Erupting Earth again. Okay. Put it in the same spot, just a little back so you don't hit, um, Zendry. Don't hit Zendry, yeah. Uh, but 14 decks, uh, the yep. thug fails... Uh, the, the, the warrior succeeds though. So if you want to roll damage, I'll, I'll suss out the, the effect as the ground below them just kind of shakes and erupts. Uh, so 15 damage. The thug is now dead. Uh, the warrior though is still alive, but bloodied, uh, as he, um, is kind of shaking and rattling around and being hurled into different places, he kind of puts out his hands and says, wait, we don't need to continue this. You've already killed the leader of this particular sect. If you let me live, I'm certain I can be of more use. Hmm. Um. I'll entertain that idea of, of use how. Uh, well, truth be told, Talos has already shown himself to not be a particularly kind master, and he allowed... Gadriel to essentially curse me and do what she will while I was here. I can show you where some of the um, more prized possessions from the uh, shipwrecks were taken and perhaps give you a master plan, as it were, or at least a target for who's causing all of this. And You can decide on your own if you'd like to pursue that hmm. or not. If you killed Gadriel, for the most part, what happened here in Leylon and beyond is... Likely will be put to an end for a while. We don't have any other agencies or cultists on land now. There's where most of them, and it seems as though what you've done here, I'm the last one left. Spare me and I'll go. I want nothing else to do with this place. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with this if he helps us. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, I'm good as long as he helps us. I don't want to just let him go. Right. As I said, I'm, I'm more than willing to show you where the best rewards can be found here. Okay. Yeah, I'm down. Show us the way. So he kind of looks around kind of in this area that you're here. Um, and you kind of see that now the, um, the, the crates are all marked. And you kind of see that they're marked uh, with things like um, supplies, cloth, textiles etc like these are basically what they were stealing off of the shipwrecks there's one marked gold and he kind of sees one of you kind of going for it and he kind of says no no that one's a bit too obvious if you know what i mean leave that one alone and he kind of tells you that this one's been trapped and that's there kind of points you around and says there's a lot of other goods that are here but you would need some way to get them off kind of opens up the different crates for you and shows you a lot of different trade goods that are in here again like really nice fancy textiles clothing items um things that basically would be used as cargo it's it's a it's a lot of it. It's probably like a good ship size worth, but he kind of looks at you and says, for sale, this would probably earn you about 2,000 gold. If you can find a way to get it off of here, it's all yours. Uh, additionally, um, Gadriel, our evoker, was keeping some pretty priced things in her shrine room. Uh, I can show you how to get behind the, uh, the statue of Talos so that you can get the things that you're looking for. Kind of walks you up that direction. Uh, and you see as he kind of like steps past um, Gadriel's like pff, like ashen, melted body. Uh, kind of steps over, spits on top of her. You get the sense he really was not a fan of her leading this area. Uh, and he kind of takes you to where this um, statue of Talos has been carved into the wall. Um, and uh, on the side of it uh, is a smoother kind of area where it looked like it was a bit of a worship altar. Um, but he pushes down on it very quickly. Uh, and it actually shows, it reveals itself to be kind of a hole in the ground. Uh, and in there is a bundle of things. Um, there's actually a small chest and he opens it up and kind of shows you there's a few hundred gold pieces in there. Uh, additionally, there are some things, a, a ring that seems to have some magical sheen to it, a wand as well, and another potion bottle. Um, he says, that's, that's all that's here. If there's nothing else that I can do for you, I think it's best if I just leave. Mm. Great. I'm going to do that. And he yeah. starts walking away. Yeah. Uh, and so you allow this person to leave. He kind of walks out of the uh, cave, not sure where he'll go from there. Uh, but it seemed to have made it clear that 
um, someone else was pulling the strings, but no other cultists are left on Leyland or at the Sword Coast, and um, going after them might mean another another particular endeavor. Um, you do see in this chest there are about 300 gold pieces. Uh, there's also a bit of a note kind of folded up uh, in there as well. Um, there's a ring, a wand, and a potion in that space too. Hmm. Anything else you guys would like to do while you're here kind of staring at these things? I'm going to take that ring. Yeah, let me check out that wand, though. Uh, roll Arcana <laughs> checks if you're trying to figure out what they are. Um, let's have Seducius roll one for the ring, uh, and we'll have um, Flux roll one for the wand. 21, boo. Um, Seducius, you're not sure what the ring does, but it does feel warm to the touch. Strange for a place that was very cold and damp. Um as for the wand, you can pretty much tell what this is. You've seen it before. Uh, you've also seen spells uh, that it would cast, kind of do it. You can kind of see some of that imagery. This is a wand of magic missiles, and it will give you the ability to cast magic missiles a certain time. Um, and then there is also a potion in there as well. Uh, and that potion um, appears to uh, like be a, a relatively thick liquid, but it's pulsing uh, with this light, uh, and the pulse is almost like a heartbeat. It's like a... D -d -d it doesn't look like those typical health potions you're used to, uh, but it seems to resonate with health of some type. Hmm. Um, so Flux took the wand of uh, magic missile. I can add it to your inventory. Uh, Seducius, you took the ring. You're not sure what it does. Uh, and there's still a potion there, the gold pieces, and the note. I'll take the gold pieces and that potion. All right. Um... Let me oh, have you no, roll no, a no, um, an Arcana check as well for the potion, just real quick to see if you know what it is. See if you recognize it at all. Uh, yeah, you're not sure what it does. You you get the sense it's got something to do with like health of some type, but it, it looks very different than the typical potions of healing. Uh, so you're not sure. Um, but you do take 300 gold pieces. I'll say that's all yours. Um, are you reading the note? Do you care to, or are you just like whatever effort? No, let's read the note. Um, so you... Um, excuse me one second, sorry. Uh, as you look in the note, um, you you see it's addressed to Gadriel, uh, and it basically is giving um, uh, the orders of what to do in this place, uh, and it essentially uh, is instructing Gadriel to start amassing um, some influence in the area, start spreading um, the influence of Talos, uh, bring some of the cultists together in this space, uh, and Talos will send storms to essentially wreck uh, boats on purpose. Uh, and the whole mission is to essentially uh, fund the building of these shrines all over the Sword Coast by wrecking these ships, selling the goods that they're stealing from them, obviously killing or converting any of the sailors on the ships, uh, and then taking the funds that they make from them and building these shrines throughout the Sword Coast. Um, in there, it does mention that they were running into challenges from other cultists of Merkul who were established in this area, these death cults that were there, ones that you've actually run into before. You kind of recognize that. Um, at the very bottom of this note, it's signed uh, Feralai Stormsworn and has the symbol of three lightning bolts next to it. Um, and finally, it says, if you need me, we'll be on the Dreadnought out to sea about a week. Kind of in postscript. Uh, hmm. And that is where... This particular campaign will end, friends. Uh, as we've cleared the Sword Coast, you actually kind of notice the storms that were happening outside have abated. Uh, there are no more um, crazy winds buffeting from outside. You can kind of hear it. Strangely enough, the tide has kind of receded as well, almost to coincide uh, with the calamity kind of ending too. You've uh, uh, really ruined the plans of these Talos nice. workers, although it seems like there might be some bigger people uh, at play somewhere off in the world. Uh, but for the most part, the Sword Codex is safe, Leylon is safe, um, and uh, all threats have been uh, reduced in this particular area, friends. Hmm. Ooh. How about did that? It. Oh, we made it. And everybody's alive. Hey, and everybody's alive. Yeah. Really. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. That was crazy. Alrighty, y'all. 
I thought we were going to have to face towels or something. <laughs> Nothing crazy. Uh, so since that's kind of the end of the campaign for this one, uh, before we break, are there any things that you want to just kind of have as your epilogue for the city of Leylon as you head back to town in Jeremy's boat, uh, carrying about 2,000 gold worth of goods? Oh my god. And that's where we'll end tonight. After I, don't get to, I don't get to use my gold. Jeez. <laughs> well, you don't know. We'll see. We'll see what we decide to do next. In fact, I want to go back to that uh, that crazy guy's shop and mm -hmm. buy something random. <laughs> uh, you do buy something random. You're not sure what it does. They are. It's a, it's a belt. Um... And uh, as you put the belt on, you kind of feel like a little bit buffer, but also strangely hairier. And as you um, kind of touch your face, you feel a giant beard has grown in. Uh, you have donned unknowingly the belt of dwarven kind. You can add that to your inventory uh, with some of the gold oh. you've spent. <laughs> as you now have a wonderful beard to, to match your wizard ways. Would anybody else like a little capstone for the end of their campaign? Yes. I want to go visit Calvin. Okay. Uh, and, my, and my followers. Uh, so you do. You actually notice it's it's kind of built its own shrine in and of itself. Um, the shrine you decided now is like it actually got four walls. It's not just a basement somewhere below a decrepit building. Um, they've actually taken the time to carve... Um, this like metal metallic statue of Bahamut that's been polished to a gleam on the outside of the building. Um, you do definitely get the sense there is still quite a bit of animosity between Marigold, uh, the priest, the high priest of Lathander here. Uh, but Bahamut definitely has a strong following in the city of Leylon. Uh, and Calvin is essentially leading this church on your behalf. Nice. Uh, he's also Calvin. taught all of the villagers really sign language a lot of them speak that now as well so oh calvin got a job yeah. i love it <laughs> funny enough you don't see hobbs though it's fine <laughs> <laughs> all right hmm. any is other is still old uh seducius is still older than he was yes that is true <laughs> Yeah, damn. I think uh, I think for my epilogue, I'm gonna go back to that uh, tavern that we first went to, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna just play some music uh, to the nightly crowd and give a little wink and smile to that, you know, sexy uh, inn manager. Okay. And, uh, Do me happens. a favor, roll up. Whatever happens, what happens. Mo roll a performance check. I want you to roll it three times. <laughs> it would be the weakest. Oh, Don't do invisible. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> One, two. So, um, you know, she she does offer you to kind of do, and she actually starts paying you some dues, and um, you you get quite the crowd. You've actually um, brought a lot of travelers to the uh, the the Wayfinder's Rest in that you guys have here um you know you've been able with the funds to kind of help her build it um you know for the most part she's keeping everything very professional although every now and then you swear she kind of like has a glint and a gleam in her eye and you know, you've been playing there now it's been maybe a month or so has passed and a little canoodling starts to happen that you aren't expecting especially with such a very stern demeanor that she has uh, but one night she does let um some of her uh wild oats reap uh and you do have quite the night of passion um she also convinces you there during you that time um to maybe invest a little bit more in the inn um and, and and play more and help her build things up and you take some of your earnings that you've um gained there um to build a better stage to build a, a, another level and some more rooms um strangely after all that is done she seems to want nothing to do with you uh, <laughs> <laughs> the passion That's has run perfect. its course <laughs> Strangely enough, uh, after the Wayfinder's Rest is quite quite nice now. I was about to say, did Seducius get wiped up? <laughs> nope, got plenty. Uh, I will say, if you guys are splitting the gold five ways, 2,000 gold pieces. Five by five. You each had... Oops, if I can do math here. 
you each had 400 gold. Seduceus, you have only 50 gold pieces left from that original one. So <laughs> you can only add 50 gold pieces to your total. <laughs> uh, she's wiped you out, was, my friend. It was worth it. It was worth it. <laughs> Uh, any other capstone bits before we uh, say goodnight to this particular campaign? Say I, I took all my gold to f- go search out the thing that was stolen from me, used it, to, and I found the person that stole it, and I stole it back. Uh, what was it that she needed to steal back? Did you remember or make that up yet? I don't know. I didn't really have it. I didn't really make it up yet. <laughs> no worries. Uh, do me a favor. Roll a... Um, Whatever it is. Just roll a d20. Just one time for me. Oh. Yeah. Um, the first big roll of the night. So uh, you, you you do manage to get back what you're getting. No, no trouble at all. Um, additionally, in doing it, you actually... Um, the, the person who stole it from you was, was so uh, just impressed by your audacity and ability to do that. Um, they've, they've offered to assist you in any other things that you, you need. Uh, and they've, they've basically started tithing and giving you more goods. You earn another 500 gold in that process. <laughs> Damn. Uh, and then you Jeez. can Let's escape go. back to the woods as is good for your druid kind. Uh, <laughs> Perfect. And, and if found a, coming up to her. Me a a bit. <laughs> cool friend. Chill, dude. Uh, Zendri or Sless, any last uh, things that you want to add before we're done? I just want to know how Mr. Krabasis is doing. Uh, you do <laughs> you do go to seek out Mr. Krabasis, um, who is still trying to stay near the Tower of Storms. Um, and for a while, um, he's doing pretty good. He's talking and excited to be around people. He, he loves getting visits from you and Flux, although the others he can kind of take or leave. Uh, he's very... Uh, excited and <laughs> what a wonderful time to to be alive in all these places but i do sense that there is uh, a bit of uh poor weather on the horizon there and that's actually the last thing um that he says before you kind of look over the distance and see uh far off in the distance but still there uh growing storm clouds um seeming to gather off into the horizon um unsure what that means but pretty able to tell it seems ominous uh that's where we'll end campaign two for the long swords, friends, uh, and another mission well done as we uh, continue yeah. our journey in the Sword Coast. Well, thanks everyone. Mm. We'll end it there tonight. Great work. No one died, although I was very close to killing a couple of you. Uh, we'll get you on the next one. Uh, in either case, everyone, thanks for uh, jumping on. We had a lot of viewers today. Uh, appreciate you all, and we'll catch there. you. Yeah, and we'll uh, we'll catch you on the next adventure. Good night, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>